This all right, all right. Live. We are live, and I got a special guest with me today. I have Solar. And you know, Solar, a lot of people got a lot of questions for you. Now, you seem mm -hmm. like you seem like you know, you you ready? You ready? Always. Okay. All right, so introduce yourself for the people. Y'all that are watching, do like Ryan said and run the likes up right now. Share, share, share. Um, if y'all want to know Solar's um, IG, that is on the screen underneath uh, his name. It's at King uh, Love Solar right there. And we're going to get on into it. So we have a lot of questions for Solar. And I know a lot of y'all got a lot of questions too. Uh, somebody said y'all just got the notification, which is great. Okay, and we're going to get into everything. Y'all have been sending messages to my inbox, like asking this, asking that, and all that. But we're going to we're gonna build up to certain things, you know, um, and we're going to get into it right after this intro. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Neek, and you're tuned in to Neek at night if this is your first time here over here we are the night owls if you have not hit that subscribe button i want you to go ahead and do that right now this is a channel where i talk about celebrity news and gossip and give my opinion on trending stories but just know keep in mind that over here this is an acquired taste you know what i'm saying this ain't for everybody so you yeah, know proceed with caution but you know hit, still hit that subscribe button Anyways, now let's get into it. Like that. So give them direction. Let hey. them start because um, that was a nice intro. That was a clean intro. I like that. Thank you. you. That was good. So, all right. So introduce yourself to the audience. Well, we had your intro. Now let's do mine. My name is Courtney Pete Townsend. They call me. Well, I my artist name is Solar Moray. So. I'm a music producer, I engineer, I write, I record, make all my own music. And you can use the name Solar Amore to find me on any platform, number one. I classify myself as a catalyst. I am a shaman, a real shaman. And I say catalyst because I believe I don't have a demographic. I think that I'm beneficial for everyone because of what I chose to work with. I am also the dean of a school called the Astral School of Everything, Ashe. And this is a, an extension of Soul Redemption, which was my network. The motto behind both is sovereignty in all dimensions. And if you guys do know my backstory already, then you understand why sovereignty, which is a completely self-governing state, would be something important for me to want to hone in on and talk about and have any level of expertise in. On top of that, I would also say that I am a, a world-class astrologer. I study all forms of astrology. I teach numerology, human design, gene keys, the I Ching, you name it. And deeper than that, the reason why I chose that practice to hone in on for myself is because it's a gift. It's an ability. And my ability to channel, me not knowing what I'm going to say, just trusting and being connected to something deeper at all times by doing the right things throughout the day. You know, um, I teach people how to hone in on their purpose and then build a lifestyle in tandem with that. But that's where it gets hard, is following that. But I've seen 100% success and I love to be my own example. So it hasn't been a pretty journey all the way, but it was necessary. And I love where we are today. Okay. So that is okay. great that you have all of these new endeavors. But the reason why we are here is because um, we want to hear more about those endeavors and we will get to those so that you can elaborate on them. But we want to know about your time in carbonation, what drew you to carbonation, and we're going to start from there. Okay. So what drew me to carbonation? was and explain what well, carbonation is for the people who are they don't know because you don't have a mixed audience so well i like the shirt the shirt today is great because i am the chief executive of carbonation i am the ceo of carbonation uh productions and it is an interesting thing because i have a hard time letting it go um for the reasons of why it started and why i went 
And the simple reason is that I was depressed, you know? I didn't have a father figure. And I was doing my best that I could, living amongst my uncles, my friends. And I didn't care about that part because I was young. So I'm really getting it. Even though I'm living with homies and friends and other families and relatives, I'm actually getting it because I'm out the house at 16, traveling the country. So in my head, it's dope. It's cool. But as you, you know, I get older, past 18, you know, it starts getting to a point to where I started to see through what people would call the matrix. Mm -hmm. I started to see through what people would call a layer of the veil. And one of these layers was acknowledging how the system is set up and how it was started and how we were lied to in our education systems and things of that nature. So naturally I became depressed. No, the more you know, you know, the more depressed you become. I had multiple awakenings over the years, but I skip past that right now just to say that I knew what was real and then I knew what was fake and I could see how much fake there was around me and it caused me to isolate myself. And I was living in the in Vista, California, in the back of my uncle's uh, house. He had like a guest house in the back that was covered in vines and trees and plants and mm-hmm. it was all run down. And I went in there and I cleaned it up and I lived in there and I slept on that floor. And I was actually studying Dolo the Pilot Man. Now, Dolo the Pilot Man is an online astrologer. If you guys don't know, he'd be smoking and he'd be going crazy with astrology. And I was just really tapping into this astrology and tarot cards. And I was learning a lot about it at the time. Um, And it was good for me because what had broke my depression years prior was the discovery of astrology. When I discovered astrology a few years prior, after a big wealthy streak, I I felt very claustrophobic. The money meant nothing to me. And astrology opened my world again. Mm-hmm. Years later, you know, I revisit this and it has become something that has helped me understand myself and life and things like that. So I digress. It was a great, that was my gateway drug into spirituality was astrology because before that i was like credit systems the banks the fraud like it's all frauds who killed tupac i was on like all kind of other stuff like the pyramids i um i resonate with nikola tesla so i was deep on energy frequency vibration i was always keen on physics and understanding of physics that was always my a plus class a plus is always in science biology you name it i killed science and it was natural I get it to this day, to a higher degree. I do astrology because I understand source code, 0.1, zero point energy, if you will. It's it's, it's God's code. It's what source is astrology, language, um, systems of all kinds. And my understanding of this so early made me feel very alone. And yet again, depressed. I'm shunning my family away because they don't understand me. I feel like they're attacking me spiritually, and but they don't know it. And I'm new to this. And I find uh, Alihio's video, Alihio Bishop's video, after I'm watching Dr. Sebi already, changing my diet, changing how I'm eating. And he had a video talking how Dr. Sebi selling herbs was wrong. And I'm like, dang, I didn't think of that. That's smart. And then I watched another video where he drops, master teacher drops never before heard knowledge. Everybody knows that video. Master teacher drops never before heard dogs. And I watched that video and I'm like, hold up. So you mean to tell me that there's another way to live? I don't have to be tracked in the States as a slave in a barcode and I can go and live in the jungle in nature with my shirt off and have service? Hold on, where they do that? He's in Belize, he's in this place, he's in that place. And I'm like, wow, I'm watching through all these videos hours and hours and hours and hours throughout my day. It's like, yo, those are my brothers. Those are my sisters. That's my family. Like, oh my gosh, they play chess. I'm going live to play chess with me and him playing chess live. I'm like, yo, I feel like this is my celebrity. And I'm so happy. I'm at home in my isolated room now. I'm connected online to Carbonation deeply. They're my escape. They're, I'm playing video games. I'm putting the, I got the video games playing while I always got a carbonation video playing on another screen. 
because I'm a music producer, engineer. I'm making music, so I got multiple screens. I have beats up sometimes with a carbonation video. I have my video game up with carbonation video or YouTube. It's always different. So Tron was my brother before he knew he was my brother. She was my sister before she knew was my, she was my sister. Natural was the guy who really got me interested because Natural's energy. I like military stuff, being very militant. My uncle's master gunny sergeant, and I was raised with him, and, and he taught me a lot of good things. Not completely raised with him, but he taught me a lot of really awesome things. And me doing NJROTC, you know, through my high school journey, I was very locked into military. To this day, I'm obsessed with guns. I love the military. I love things like that. I love order and structure. I'm that guy. I, I can take a drill sergeant in my face, screaming and spitting for me to become better and stronger. I can do that. I'm on some Spartan stuff. So mm -hmm. Alihio is not a turnoff to me. I'm not like how he acting crazy. I'm like, yeah, nigga, tell him. Like, the truth is the truth. The lie is a lie. Check the demons at the door. Tell him. Hold up. And I'm in my house talking about not get out my room. Like, no, I ain't eating that. I don't want, why are you offering me that? You already know I'm on some other shit right now. Why would you offer me that? You attacking me. And I was like that with my family. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this isn't his fault. This is my fault. This is me. This is my uh, spiritual immaturity is what I'm going to call it. We have emotional intelligence. I like spiritual immaturity. I'm not had that heavy. And, you know, through watching those videos so long, that was just life. And that became my new life in the States. And I felt comfortable within my knowledge. Everything he was saying, I already agreed with. So I was like, that's my family. So you got to realize I'm I'm not worried about him lying, deceiving. I'm like, he's one of the only guys who's saying what I'm saying. I All right, so I'm going to pause you right I'm there. All right, so I'm going to pause you right there. there. All right, so I'm going to pause you right there. So after you um go through this journey of finding him and resonating with him, you end up there. So I'm going to play a video, and then we'll talk about it after Ooh. that. So, All right, uh, play the video. <laughs> let me play this video. Oh, hold on. Let me make it a little bigger in the background. This is kind of fun. And we need you to get to these answers videos. a little quicker, uh, Solar, okay? No, they want to hear that. They're going to they, they gonna replay it. They're going to do all that. I'm not worried about the immediate response. All right. Why don't tell me I look good? Don't nobody tell me I look good. I feel no, listen, we about to play this video. Hold on. Your choice to to level up or to just have an unhealthy state of mind and, and feel attacked. Now, what I what I did was I just tapped into the message and I started to network. And through the networking, I had met some other reflections. And we actually we just got together and we got some tents. Mm -hmm. We went out into a nature reserve, literally. Uh, when <laughs> whenever it was closed, like it had a time that we weren't even supposed to be there, but. When it was closed, we would go off the San Diego out somewhere. We found like a little spot to where we could set up our tent, and we did that for for a good a good little bit. And uh, we we were able to literally like get away from all of the buildings, get away from the cars, the streets, everybody. And it was just animals and, and nature. And you know, I was literally able to walk around naked out there. It was it just use. And it's not about being naked. It's about using the technologies of your body. You know, your skin is meant to to communicate with the universe and i was uh, if yo if you wearing a shirt right now if you wearing pants right now if you wearing socks or a hat or sunglasses you are denying yourself yeah. the ability to communicate with yourself with the it's universe clothes. and in doing this trust me just a couple of days you're gonna start to notice that um your your whole mindset's gonna change you know you're gonna start to really look back on your life and this is why we say you have to go into isolation first because you're going to start to see everything for what it really is. Mm. Um, and, you know, once you do that, then you're not even going to want, people ask you, can we come and visit? You're not going to mm -hmm. want to visit. If you truly yeah. left Babylon, you wouldn't want to visit. You would want to stay out of that. You would want to just go and live in nature. And, uh, you will be taken care of. You Don't know? wait to uh, be carbonation. Like when you get here, like start where you at. That's but, right. like, that's what you're trying to say. Like, right. Right. you know, a lot of, a lot of us want to join carbonation but aren't even living like carbonation where we are. We're right. All right, so I'm gonna pause that right there. Um, you look like you look you, you lit up. You lit up when you seen that video. How old yeah, were that you? Was good. How old were you? Was, video? Maybe 23. About 23. 
now 22 23 now that video is special because that's i actually like to see that i'm glad you did that because it was to me it's still true that is very true as soon as this is over i'm taking my shirt off that's that's actually true mm -hmm. you know um and then the innocence in in the journey at that point i had already been disrespected to many degrees and levels but didn't care because i'm in such a military state at this point in time I was put ahead of all the men. I was put in charge of all the men because they all tried to get me in trouble. Everybody had just tried getting me in trouble. So where's this? He's beating this. Yeah, man, he's starting a problem here, starting a problem there. Elihio was like, bruh, sound like he getting y'all right and y'all don't like it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make him the leader of all of y'all because everything y'all complaining about was something I would have did. And, and then I'm like, yeah. And so I'm over here in charge of everybody, and I'm one of the only people who's saying, hey, I want to go live. I want to do videos. I want to teach now. I want to share now because I was already doing that. So I was keen on, and I still am to this day, which is why I'm still the way I am, is that I, I believe that the truth still needs to get out there. I believe that, you know, speaking that truth is the most important thing and living it is the most important thing. So I can, I'd like to see that. That was good. All right. So when, really you first, much. when you first started your introduction uh, and speaking about you saying that you feel like the truth still needs to be out there, you said that you were the CEO of Carbon Nation. Is that current or past tense? Cur that's current. I mean, it's a, it's a business. So you are running Carbon Nation now. So you started your own version of Carbon Nation? No, I just find it ironic that in the process of you know, securing the financial side and responsibilities of the group, the cult. I ended up having to do that in my name many years ago. And it's been a benefit because the type of LLC that is, is actually a really good one. So the more you know, that's why I teach a lot of things that I teach because I, I had to learn how to use it. I, I, when I learned that I had it, I didn't. So it's funny how I figured out how I had it. I'll make this quick. Is that Shaka, and I'm gonna use his name because he would love for me to use his name. Shaka, my man Shaka Zulu. He hit me up. He said, "Hey man, we trying to do this thing for Carbonation, and it's copyrighted, man. We can't do it. Like, there's an owner of it, mm -hmm. but it's say the owner Courtney Townsend. What's going on? I'm like, yeah, for real. I looked into it. I'm like, yo. I went my email. I'm like, I got everything. Oh, I do own everything. Oh, that was cra that's crazy." I'm the actual CEO of Carbonation. That's weird. And this was um, years later. This was like um, maybe one year after I left because I was with Velvet at the time. You know, it was right before, right before I got with her. And I was very just surprised by it. And that put a big shift in my mind to where I'm like, you know what? I should revamp Carbonation because I did do it. I did revamp Carbonation when I got with Velvet. Um, amazing. Uh, women, by the way, my baby mothers are amazing women, by the way, if you want to know my opinion. I think I have great mothers for my children. I have very magical, amazing kids. I digress. they great mothers. So uh, it was when I had got with Velvet. Um, we revamped Carbonation because we felt like Alihio's name shouldn't put a stain on what can actually help people. Or specifically what we were saying at the time was Black people because the people who are lacking the knowledge. Because this knowledge, spiritual as it is, there is an intellectual understanding of it that upper echelons do have. So mm -hmm. I digress. We we re redid it. Felt like it was just his name that was a problem. Alihio has always been the issue. His name, what he was doing. Because we knew the truth. You guys are still finding stuff out. We so know everything. I still got videos y'all ain't never we, seen. We kind of jumping ahead. Doing crazy shit. So at we the end of the wait, day, wait, 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 solar, solar, solar. We kind of jumping ahead. Stop. We kind of jumping stop. ahead. Go ahead. You don't have to just stop me. I'm o I'm okay with it if you stop me. Okay, but you and Velvet were starting your own version of Carbonation. That's what you're saying. We redid it, and we felt like Alihio's name, what he did, was the problem, and the knowledge was never the issue. We still believe in everything. Like I have charts for all the girls. Like, and we. We look at these things and we try to adapt and live in a way that's helpful for us, the kids, future generations. We're really trying to work and heal. Like, so we'd be at the house really trying to eat better, really trying to do better. And I will apologize publicly for saying for this. This is this might be something people would like. I'll 
apologize publicly for maybe letting loose too early when I was in my relationship with actually both of the relationships, but more so with Velvet. Mm -hmm. I kind of let loose when we went to party like with my mother and they were having Mexican parties. They have all kinds of food there. We started to eat whatever after being purely alkaline. And then it started to become a trend of eating whatever. And I will say that was probably a big contribution to the downfall of that relationship because we were so healthy and we were doing so much daily in our in alignment with what we were teaching to live it. So the moment we got too comfortable eating like other foods, it's like we started not living it and things just kind of started falling apart for different reasons at different times. So I will acknowledge that publicly. All right. So we're going to we're going to. Cause that's that's ahead in the story. We're gonna get into, is it? Um, and I can't yeah, look at is. y'all comments because they is doing too much in the comments. So I can't, I'm not even reading them. I'm not even gonna read them. I'm just here. Okay, yeah. Don't them. don't 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 read the comments because because I'll fuck with me. So that's enough. Okay. All right. Cool. So um, that's later. We're gonna get more into Velvet. We're gonna get more into that relationship. But I kind of want to go in sequence mm -hmm. and then get to there. But I just wanted to clarify when you said um about uh carbonation being the ceo and things like that so anyways moving on so you get into carbonation and you are happy to be with a group of people who are like-minded they are living the way you live they are teaching the things that you live and you kind so of I, find thought, I thought they knew what i knew and come to find out alihio was the only one who knew a smidgen of what i knew and everybody else were students and i was disappointed but it, I digress. It was okay because I still felt like I had a major role there. Even because of that, even made me more important there. Okay, so that's how I was feeling. So you felt like you were smarter than everybody that was there. I don't feel like it. I know things to where they they sit around me all day and learn from me too. While Leo teaching what he teaching, we at nighttime tense. We supposed to be sleeping. I can't stop talking. If you guys haven't noticed, I talk a lot. I channel a lot. And when I, I, whenever it's me and the guys, I'm always teaching them man shit. Like, I'm always teaching them stuff like sovereignty things. I, when I share videos with them and stuff like that. And when I had just got there, the beginning things, I was teaching them with the same, same things. How to be your own man. How to do the, how to be disciplined for you. I'm really on that self development. So I can't stop talking about it. The guys love to share a tent with me. They love to be around. They ask to, to hey, can I sleep in here tonight? Because they know I'm going to be talking all night. And they want to get something. So I'm always teaching the guys. To, the, the, guys teaching the, guys. the guys wanted to sleep where you were sleeping at? Yeah. So we have these major tents, big Cabela tents. And if it's not the Cabela tents, it's rooms. I sleep in the studio. I get to sleep in really cool spaces a lot. Sometimes I have my own space. Majority of the time, I have my own room, my own space, my own private guest estate. I'm always treated very well there. So it was it was interesting. I'd have like Jacks and Juju, for example, even if we're at a barbershop or a small spot and you're sleeping in a barbershop, they would still want to come and sleep in my room because why? I'm going to be teaching them stuff all day. I teach them their charts. I teach them how the universe works. I teach them the actual truth behind three, six, nine, and 12, except for what Alihio does, which is abuse actual information and truth for money and, and coochie. It's, I don't know. I don't need to do that. You know what I mean? So you, and you, feel like, you feel like you were like a, a better leader than uh, Nature Boy? I can honestly say I stand on the truth. And I can honestly say that I'm here to represent uh, for the youth. And I do my best to be the best example I can. However, I haven't always been that. So I focus daily on just becoming better at that. And I think that even back then, I knew that and felt that about myself. And I felt the struggle between being told the opposite and doing it was like that warrior's grit being built in me as if I was to join the military because I'm very militant already. So I'm transitioning it like this for me to evolve. And I'm really here to, I'm, I'm on, I know what I'm here to do. And I've been doing that since I was a kid. So that's never been a question for me. I was easy bait because I felt like this was my family. The okay. knowledge was, 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 was like the worm on the hook. But the real hook was the family, and that kept me in there. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on from that. So once you get into carbonation, you develop a relationship with Zoka. So we're going to go to Jayon. Uh, Jayon. Uh, we're going to go. Marie. We're going to go to a moment where you guys realized that you guys were having a baby. Ooh. 
And then this is a crazy um, moment. I'm gonna tell y'all some shit about wait, this moment wait, right here. Wait, Solar, wait till we wait. wait. Mm, okay. Oh wait, we about to get to it. So let me let me play the video. Hold on, hold on. What is the title of this video? Oh, is that really your background, Neek? This. Yeah, that no green, that no green screen. Oh, look at you! You're <laughs> yeah. lavish. I yeah, like that's that. The background. Thank you. I like the moons in the back. Okay. All right, so let's get to this video. Thank you, by the way. This uh -huh. video was posted by Stinson has the soup. So I like to give her her credit. Really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really surreal. Um, they said so long shooting the club up. The <laughs> <laughs> real 18. Yeah. That's your first one, right? Yeah, my first. Eight, eight. I think it's a girl. It's a girl. It was a girl. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. That's how. It was a girl. We were separated this whole time. It's a girl. It was a girl. Such a beautiful video of you and Zoka. So you know we wanna we wanna hear about this situation. Okay, so let's consolidate some information this time. Cause this was a snippet, but it was a major part. Zoka and I were separated prior to this. Mm -hmm. We were sneaking around and getting caught for it, not caring. Cause it's like that's my girl. <laughs> okay, I don't care. Like if I get caught for sneaking around with my girl. So you were sneaking around from um Nature Boy? We were living at Mama Cookie's house at the time. That was in Cookie's master bedroom mm -hmm. in Atlanta. And um I was sleeping downstairs in the dining room. We cleared out the dining room and I had my studio set up in there too. I would sleep in there and she would sleep where the girls sleep. But we would sneak out and meet downstairs in the basement or outside somewhere outside in the front but anywhere and you know that's just my girl we just spend time we'll talk we'll share things on our phones like what we need whatever and you know the other wives used to do this too they used to come to me at those same times and come and ask me questions about him and stuff like what should they do and things like that interesting especially at cookie's house so anyway Actually about him who uh, nature boy yeah like oh. um yeah, like how they should operate. Like they'll just get in trouble or something and the girls would come to me and be like, so like, can you help me? Should I be with Caliber? Should I do this? Should I do that? Things like that. And um, anyway, to consolidate it, right? We find out she's pregnant. And that was the first time I had hugged her like that um, in front of everybody. Yeah, oh, wow. So you could see how weird I was being. Mm-hmm. I hadn't touched her like that in front of everybody in a while. So okay. when I, when it was up there and like being, it being okay, I felt like our relationship was open again. Like it was, we were back, like, like freak, fuck all these boundaries, all these restrictions we have, we're back. And um, this is what I'm thinking about in this time. Uh, Cause I want to be there. I know I'm going to be able to be there. That's like ultimate exception, pregnancy, right? Mm -hmm. This is what's crazy, right? So that's before, that's during. You guys saw the during. Now the after is where it gets fucking crazy. Okay. Right when the camera goes off, he shifts his mood from happy to angry. And, and he, he tells all the girls to shut the fuck up. Tell all the girls they're all fucking dumb for being happy and excited because this is a bad thing. 
and he starts telling everybody how bad of a thing this is. And this is the first time he started bringing up demon babies because he was like, well, you had you could see the baby in Georgia and that's outside of the tropics. So automatically it has to be a demon baby. And so we're just like, so are we good? Like what's going on now? Like now is it bad? And now he's just cussing out all the women. He's cussing out Natiri. He's cussing out, she's Natiri at the time, right? She's cussing out uh, Aya and Efru for being excited and happy. And he just completely shifted the whole entire everything and everything became a bad thing after that. And it was just like that. And then it wasn't until like weeks later or like about like a week or two later, he came to me and said, it was all just a joke. It's all just a gimmick. It's just for media. He definitely doesn't believe my child's a demon. He needs more solars. He needs as many solars as he can have. Actually, if there's anybody who should have babies, it's me. I mean, he, he started to gas me with all of that. And I was like, all right, yeah, so this is for media and this is the reality. Me and him, we good. We know what time it is. They don't know what time it is. So demon baby online. And I'm and even I if you even catch it, even back then I did a couple lives where I'm like, I was like, yeah, we had our child outside the tropics. We could have had a child in the tropics. So now we're gonna have to work even harder with our child to make sure we make there's no generational curses that get perpetuated because we made this decision. So we started to make lives like that. Means I'm gonna try to be responsible in the group making videos like that, you know, to make everybody happy and we made sense of it. Cause I'm thinking. We good. Nah, brother, ain't no demon, baby. Hey, nah, we good. This is family. You know, can't wait. I need more babies. Me and Zoka go crazy. We have these keep going. And while she's pregnant, who cares? Like, right. I'm thinking like, oh, this isn't bad. And so I'm going on like this for nine months. You know, and in between there, there's a lot of different stories and hiccups that come up with the pregnancy to where I learned things after I left carbonation and there were things that happened in front of me that were really uh, traumatizing, if you will, okay. for lack of better terms. So what would happen that was traumatizing? You're talking about as far as Zoka's pregnancy? Um, This was a crazy day, and I'll just mention it. And I don't know what you had planned next, if you want to go on to that next. But no, we're going to hear. We're going to hear. I the think, I'm going to mention it. And Hold end on. with Hold Zoka. On. I'm going to mention Okay, cool, cool. I'm going to mention it, and I'm going to bring up a topic that's sensitive, so I don't want to go too deep on it, but this, because I want to highlight the fact that that day where Velvet was surrounded in a circle, being beat up, you guys all probably heard about that. That was the same day that he had forced uh, Zoka to drink wine. Not even wine, it was like other alcohol mixtures. It was like a couple of things in the cup. He didn't, I don't think he knew what was in that specific cup, but it was a couple of things in that cup. It was mine. And he took my cup in when he made her drink it. And it was that or she had to get kicked out and leave. She either drank the wine and trusted him or she doesn't trust him and he should leave and she should leave. And the problem was that he had told, he was telling her, Eliana, Velvet drank wine all the time when she was pregnant with Eliana and Eliana came out just fine. He was raised on crack. So we don't trust him to let Zoka drink a little bit of wine on 4th of July. Then she might as well and leave. Okay. with the baby and everything and i get to stay but she leaves and you know that ultimatum after the fact me and zoka are in the bathroom i'm telling her i said look if you're gonna get in if you want to get an abortion we're gonna get an abortion if we're gonna have this child we're gonna take care of this child i'm gonna work with you on either decision i'm with you on either one and she said she wanted to keep our child we're crying in the bathroom and everything she's begging me to forgive her i do it's all these different things going going on. We're getting water. I'm doing everything I can to like look up things to like get rid of alcohol for system quick and stuff like that. We're in a bathroom, we're tucked away doing this. She's hugging me, crying, everything for like you're in there for like 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you know, we decided to keep our child from then on. And we're not doing an abortion. We decided in that moment. So from then on, we we're keeping this child. And she's had multiple opportunities to do an abortions. She's had abortions planned, uh, flights booked. Alihio helping her do all this stuff and she kept denying it and one of the times I had the ultimate decision and I said no and, you know over the over the course of these months so just constant threat to the child but little did I know behind my back during this time he was having her drink on other occasions on the fourth of July topic I brought that up because 
Zoka wasn't the only one who went through something crazy. Velvet did too. And we do ignore that a lot. And I don't think it's cool to ignore that because that day was a crazy day. I believe it was a 4th of July and it was a Capricorn full moon on top of everything. So, I mean, if anybody who knows astrology, you just look that up. And that's what we experienced. And that was a crazy day, but that's oh, well, we go. You keep velvet with the velvet. We gonna get to velvet. She gonna be later. <laughs> well, they all. Been, they, you gotta understand, Nika's funny, but they've all been here the whole time. All of them. Yeah. They were actually there before Zoka. Right, but but the segment about her gonna be later. Continue. <laughs> I don't know your roster. If you told me your roster, I could work with you. I'm talking about Zoka. Talk about Zoka then. Ask me a question. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you what what I what I think about. Okay, so that was a very traumatic thing. She drunk your cup of alcohol, and then behind your back on several other occasions, he had her drinking alcohol as well. With an ultimatum to leave, apparently every time. Right. So as she's going along with her pregnancy. You guys all accept the pregnancy. You think about like, oh, maybe we'll do abortion. And then you guys all deny it and decide to proceed with her pregnancy. So once you continue to proceed with her pregnancy, did she, how was she as a pregnant woman? Like, was she having like a lot of aches in her stomach? Were you seeing the baby kick a lot? Like what kind of, how, how was the pregnancy? Our baby was kicking a lot. Our baby was very healthy the whole time. As far as I was concerned, I was doing extra things, getting her extra food. I'm cook. I'm her personal chef. You know, I ha- she has her own closet of stuff. She's getting extra care. It was actually a really good experience, if you ask me, as far as how certain levels of treatment were going on in daily activities. In the mundane, it was really good. It was a higher quality of life that we lived in general during her pregnancy. Um, me having access that I had already to things that I had was even better. So... And then there's a lot of public support as well, family support and public support for the child as well. So it was a era of, of a lot of abundance for us. So we had a great, healthy pregnancy aside from all of those instances. Those were the only instances where I said things were, were bad. Other than that, all the way up to nine months, I feel like we're good because I'm, I'm here sleeping with my baby every night. I definitely gave my child more attention than Zoka did. And I'll say that for sure. I was I gave her way more attention. She Zoka was in this trance to where she didn't know she should be with the Lee Hill or me. So she had issues sometimes feeling good or bad about our child. And so I was always there to balance that pretty much every single night. And he was, you know, he was sleeping with her while she was pregnant. What do you mean? She was confused about yeah, she they ended up doing that. Yeah, of course. They ended up doing that. And I don't know when it was behind my back, but I'm aware of when it happened, which is in that time when they're in the house in Cancun where all the women were having sex with him in one day, apparently, or something. Zoka was included in that. And that's the one that broke my heart. That's the one that I really found out about. And, you know, I don't know if it happened before or after any other times. You know, I'm sure probably most likely, you know. And so, you know, that, that's the case. And that was, uh, that was, I don't know, that was one of the times where we were heavily considering abortion the most. That's when she had it scheduled. She was going to fly out from Cancun from that place, from that specific house, to the States to get an abortion, which was being supported by a bunch of people. And I denied it. I told everybody no. So was she sleeping with him around the time that you guys uh, got pregnant also? No. Yes, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know what I don't know at this point when it comes to things like that, Neek. As far as I'm concerned, you know, that's not what's going on when we're when they are doing their thing we're not in a relationship at all we're not together and that's established so that is one thing that we did a lot that he would play with a lot was we would establish if we were the reason why the reason why i say that is because you said um before you guys had to sneak around to do it so i didn't know if that's because she was also um and and i will say that i guess that's my fault because when he's with her she's with me i guess that's my fault because when she's with me she's with me and I don't know if she does the same thing and goes to be with him around. I wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. Just like when she's with him, she's with me usually. They don't know. This is like every night. We sneaking out under the moonlight, like in nature. And like we're we're walking throughout the day, sending each other signs throughout the day, little small things. Like mm-hmm. 
it was kind of cute. It was kind of like a little movie. I ain't gonna lie between between me and her. It was a real um Yeah, I was making it romantic. Romantic tragedy. Yeah. Yeah, that's my nature though. I like to be the Prince Charming. Let down your hair, Rapunzel. That is definitely my energy. So I definitely played that role and yeah. Okay. It's, so and between me and her, it's like she's always like with me. She'll even tell me on a low, like, I think you're the real king. I think you're the real one. She'll always tell me that shit on a low. And I'll be like, okay. no, you're trying to turn me against Eligio. Stop. Don't do that. Appreciate it, though. Nah, but don't say that. You know, that's how it was between me and Zoka. She was always empowering me. And I was always like, you try to get me in trouble. Okay. That's how I was in the group. Yeah. So you guys she, really, you really were like truly, do you feel like you were truly in love with Zoka? 100%. Yeah, I, I, all the women I've been with, I've been one like one hundred percent committed and in love to. Never cheated on them, you know. Uh, wanted to marry them, wanted to have a family with them. I'm very selective. I can get around, but I don't. And I'm very proud of the women that I have chosen to be with. Okay, so let's uh, move forward with uh, the 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 pregnancy, and you guys are at to the point where it's time to deliver. Does she go into contractions? Um, what happens? Well, we're shooting. We're shooting the music video "Love." Uh huh. She has a song called uh, "Love," and we were shooting the music video for that at the beach with the pregnant belly. They drew on the belly, said "Love" on there, and everything had the sunshine and all that beautiful stuff, right? And um, we're done shooting the video, and right when we're pretty much done, she goes right into labor. Right when we're in the water at the beach. Okay. And uh, luckily. The hospital is right there where we want to be. So we get in the grand, we all go like, oh, the hospital's right there. We go to the hospital quick. <clears throat> and then they just drop me and her off. And then it was just me and her. And from there, everything was really good. Everything was really cool. Um, I gave Ali Hill my shirt, needed help with whatever he needed the shirt. I gave him my clothes, whatever. I'm like, uh, um, I still, I gave him what they needed. I took what I needed. I organized everything in a van during the process. And when we departed, you know, we were, I made sure that we were good to be there overnight or a couple of days or whatever. I had everything I needed and they had what they needed. And we're going in the emergency. They help her, the, all the hospital people, they help her. First thing they do is scan, check the baby, see if the baby's good. Everything's good. Everything's fine. Heartbeat, everything's just fine. There's nothing wrong. At a certain point, she started having her contractions heavier, stronger, and we can clearly see that it was getting painful for her. And when it started getting really painful for her, when they were gonna move her, they had her waiting to like move her to another spot for like an x-ray or something. And I believe it was in that process where they stopped hearing a heartbeat. And they said, and the end story is that, you know, if I skip through, well, let me just say this. We don't want you to skip very, through this part. It, it was very sad. It was very sad what, what, what happened, like obviously, we were in disbelief. I'm sitting there arguing with everybody, of course, like, no, check the thing again. Like, you're tripping. No, the baby's there. Like, we, it's clearly there. We know it's it's been nine months. It's all this is there. The baby's there. You're tripping. Do it again. Like, how does it work? Like, let me do it. I'm doing it. They're like, they're not even tripping. They're just like, they already know what time it is. And I can, now that I'm done, th done with it, I could see that. That they already knew what time it was. And... Um, they were just trying to help me get through it and help her get through it. So they're retesting, redoing this like a million times, you know, all these different things. And there's just no more heartbeat. Okay. And we're just like, no way, this got to be something else. It's got to be something crazy. Like something got to happen. Like what's going on? But at the same time, I'm kind of like accepting it um, because she's there. And I have to be the man in the situation. So I'm there. I'm not crying at all. Very good at doing that, even in this moment, right? And I'm there for her and I'm being strong with her. And I'm explaining, I'm, I'm saying what they're saying to us kind of back to her, like, it's okay. Like, mm -hmm. this isn't, this happens a lot. This happens to a lot of people. This isn't rare, like anything like that, things like that. But I'm letting her know that I love her no matter what. I'm saying little poems to her. You know, she's her mind is really with me at the time, and I'm very glad that I, you know I was there for this whole process because I had her mind the whole time, and she's not she was crying at first, 
she stopped crying and she kind of was just like in this neutral state of like not knowing she's still pregnant she still has this she's still pregnant the baby's just not alive so she's not this is just this limbo state for her so i'm just keeping her attention and i'm just we're just i love it i'm just kissing on her just lots of love it's all good they end up transitioning us to the next hospital where they're deciding like how we should give birth to the baby that's no longer alive and we end up going all the way to san juan from hato Rey, i believe or no i forgot it's something like that in Arecibo. we went from Arecibo all the way to san san juan if you guys know what that distance it wasn't too crazy but we had the ambulance going got there they suggested the best way to deliver the baby was natural because it would have it, it wouldn't have any scars it would be easier to recover from. Um, it actually be easier, all these all around better, rather than cutting into her, taking it out those ways and things like that. Those could be more dangerous. Mm -hmm. So we agreed to just do it natural. I'm still with her and we're going through this full blown birth. It's just now we know the child's dead. So it's just like a really grim feeling in this space. It's just it's really like the air, this, the atmosphere is dark green, you know, already. And that's crazy because when the, she finally did give birth to the baby, it was all dark green, everything in there. And the placenta, you can clearly see the placenta was clearly damaged and clearly poisoned. And that's exactly what they said. We told the people the baby was strangled. We told them other stuff because we knew if they told them, if we told the people the placenta was poisoned, which was the case, which is, it was obviously the case. I saw it and I'm like, all right, bro, I'm not even tripping because this is clearly why I can't trip on them anymore. You know, and, and this is clearly the reason. This is bad. I've seen placentas before after lotus births. This is not what you want to see. So I'm just like, damn. There, it was amazing that my baby made it that long. Is apparently yeah. the story. And with me seeing this, I instantly know it was the alcohol. Instantly. Instantly. That's the first thing I'm like, it couldn't have been nothing I did. Could have been nothing she did could only been alcohol. That's it. Do you think it could have been was, alcohol plus something she else? She was big. She was healthy. She was. She had all her toes. She had her hair. She's a full-blown child when she mm -hmm. came out. And to me, she looked like Janae Aiko. Um, that's how I remember her. That was baby love. That was baby love. She was born during the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter very rare time. And um, I knew her name already. Her name was Love already before all of this. And it was crazy because Alihio had called us at the time. And when I was telling him, you know, the baby didn't make it. And he called us and he's like, oh, so you, you, you I know you want to blame me, huh? How you gonna blame me? You really think that was me? I was raised on crack. I was raised on a crack smoke. It wasn't that that did it. It was the universe that was doing this. And I, immediately in my head, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, shut the fuck up. I'm cussing like a storm in my head already. I remember on the phone. In my head, I'm cussing up a storm, letting him say whatever the fuck he wants to say from wherever he was at. Oh, so you were just like thinking of curse words, but not saying them? At first. Okay. I did end up cussing him out briefly. I cussed him out briefly. And uh, and he's like, all right, we'll see what you have the same energy at the house. I'm like, yeah, whatever, nigga. Hung up. Because I'm like, I don't even know how he, he knows he's wrong. And I'm, I'm confident in that. So I just let it go. Like you're, 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 you, uh, to me, he's coping with it. And I'm like, fuck you. Zoka, Zoka knows it was him. And I'm like, oh, we lost service. I guess the service isn't working here. And I just put my phone in the pocket, in my pocket. And I spent the next 70, like next 48 hours almost with her, just with her. Um, they snuck me, the hospital, the nurses, they actually snuck me into the room every night. They allowed me to stay with her every single night. And um, it was actually really just like one full night. And then we ended up leaving at a random time. Um, uh, true, and the guys were outside with the van and they were able to take us back and Zoka was feeling good enough to go back. So we ended up going back. Um, the nurses made sure we had everything we needed as we left. So it was all good. And um, yeah, we ended up going back. I already knew it wasn't going to be no smoke from Alihio because he's wrong. So immediately, what is did he she, doing? Did she he's drink avoiding the situation day? and not talking about it. No, did she, she didn't. Did she I drink know, I don't know. that day? No, she didn't drink that day. And no, she didn't drink that day. 
and it, I don't okay. know. There's things that like you ask me questions like that, and I get nervous because I'm like, "What if she did? I don't know. I hope yeah. not. What else do I not know? Did they put something in her food? Like, what do I? What I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, do There's you think I did? I did the most for everything. I learned everything about being with a pregnant woman, what she needs to eat, how she needs to be, how she needs to lay, how she needs to be catered to, things that can help her get through certain pains at certain times postpartum i'm looking up all this stuff non-stop i'm a gemini i can't help it and i'm doing all these things for her while she's mentally detached she don't know if she's supposed, if she's supposed to be good or bad i'm catering to the child playing music for our child getting specific foods for her to eat things did not eat cutting things out all of that the catering to her got her own nice set made her a little a, a nest helped her create do her arts Mm -hmm. It was heaven living in that living in a space with me with her. That was heavenly. That was really nice. That was the best I've ever lived. It was just doing what was needed to be done for a pregnant woman. So that's my first child. That was my first child. Mm -hmm. I did. I pulled out all the stops, everything possible I could do. And um, when it came to that, and I'm thinking things were really good. Nine months, good. I thought we're good. We had checkups, and the checkups were all good. You, so you guys were going to the hospital throughout her pregnancy? Yep. yep, multiple times, different times. That's why I didn't like it when people were saying, you guys don't even do that. No, we went to the hospital and met multiple times throughout our travels and Did different hospitals a, a as we traveled. The baby? Hmm? Did you guys have a funeral for the baby? Me and Zoka did kind of, but no official nothing, no. Oh, okay. The so child you guys was taken at the hospital. Oh, so she she never left from... They told me they're going to cremate the child at the hospital. That's what they told me. I let it go. I didn't even want to go into conspiracies because my mind goes crazy when it comes to babies and governments and hospitals. So I, I didn't even do all that. So I just said, all right. And I just let the whole situation go. I got to hold my child long enough to hope to resuscitate it. Zoka did too. It, it was done. So we let, it, let that go at the hospital. So people with all of their different theories, like that's what happened. He did lie when we told them that the baby was strangled by her umbilical cord. Because if we told them that the placenta was poison, everybody was going to go for Eligio. Me and Zoka were like, fuck. Like, so what yeah, do we do? Yeah. We came back. We tried to make a video to defend him. And we showed him the video before we put it out. And he's like, just don't even put it out at all because he's going to call too much attention to it. You know, and... Inevitably, people just came up with their own theories of what happened to my child. But you guys got to go ask the hospital in Arecibo because I don't know. They told me it was going to be cremated, and I left it at that. Okay. Well, it would be San Juan uh, Rio Hato. That's the hospital name, San Juan Rio Hato. Okay. So after that you guys, so after you guys go back to the. Where were you guys staying in the Airbnb or where were you guys staying at? Puerto Rico. We had the house unlocked. We we allowed part of the house we had to be an Airbnb. This is a multi-million property that I was able to leverage and in Puerto Rico. Very beautiful, one of the most beautiful places in Utuado. Um, and I was able to leverage the property by making a deal with the owner to partially Airbnb it. And then certain areas were hours only. We paid monthly rent. And I, we were improving on the house and the property and, and maintaining things and taking away bills from him. So it was more incentive to have a really low rent for a really nice place. And we helped him run his Airbnb and sold dishes. When we made our solar noon, we made extra and we would sell it to the people who would visit for like $15 what's a plate. The, what's the solar noon? What's that? What's that? that we, we, well, it was, the reality is in circadian rhythm, serotonin when it's being produced in your body it's going to help you digest food and that is when the sun is at its peak which is around 12 to 3 p.m and at that time is when the, you're supposed to eat and digest food and and so we caught what we did at carbonation we called it solar noon we would eat our big meal of the day at that time so i know that's what that was oh but okay no uh Child, I don't know what the heck, but okay. I don't know. Yeah, that's, all, that's what it was. I yeah. thought you said like y'all would sell something. I thought it was like yeah, just, that's what we sold the food. We would make a lot, and when it was when we had our food ready, we would make them plates. The guests at the Airbnbs, and we would make money that way. So it was a deal with the owner to where 
It was a lot of things. So it was an Airbnb, okay. but we were working with his Airbnb in many ways. We had our own space though. And oh, okay, okay, just okay. did not All go right. there. All right. So when you guys get back, you and Zoka get back, what is the dynamic That's life? That's sauce for y'all. If y'all want if y'all doing real estate or looking to do real estate, leverage opportunities. You can lower your rent easily. Free sauce. Go ahead. What was the dynamic like when you and Zoka returned from the hospital? They gave us the same space that we had. It was like the same as when she was pregnant. They gave us the same space. They gave us the same time. But eventually, uh, over time, she ended up going back over there with the women and we kind of stopped our relationship. It was more of a single thing. So, single thing. So, but we, we still met up every day. It was still like, that was still my girl, you know, and, and everybody's understanding. All right. So, we're going to skip ahead. To hold on, let's pull up our next video. Crazy times, man. Let's pull up our all right. People have been asking about that for a while. Oh, look at that! One of many. All right. Made you understand things. Yeah. And that's what that was. What enabled you to let it go and the situation coming to an end of a cycle mm -hmm. and you're back now yeah because I, you feel like you're reliving certain things that you already like, I'm, I'm trying to relive them but he's doing something different so i'm stuck because i have not could it mean that the relationship's just not meant to be and you're trying to force something rather than letting it flow and be there and be progressive um Could it be that we belong together? It could be. It could be. <laughs> that is. Because you're not developed. You're not developed yet on your own. He's having a hard time doing it for you. You don't want to do it for yourself. All right. So I'm going to pause it. So this is when you guys are in a polygamous relationship and trying to figure out how to navigate with um, Natiri added in the relationship. So I'm going to play a little so bit. So we're actually not in a polygamous relationship yet at this time. Oh, yeah, I wasn't? No, we're, we're, just always talk we're just always talking about it. Because y'all was saying about how y'all wanted to be together and then y'all was like, what? We was polygamous in Atlanta before, officially. But after that, it was always just been back and forth. Should we all be together or not? Okay, I'm going to play a little bit more. Coexistence. Right? When you put yourself there, there's a coexistence. But I have to make something up for you. Zoka. She crying? I think so. I don't know if I can make it any bigger. Hold on. It's not one of us. Even as I'm talking to her right now, she's. Oh, she crying. She crying. Distracted by emotions. Yes. And not able to penetrate. She's feeling strong. There's a wall there. You're gonna have to deal with it. all this and for the rest. So what happens when this happens is she has all the medicine. I may remind her. I may see this. Clarify what medicine is. The knowledge. Okay, say that because people are listening and they could be thinking right, right, right. On some psychiatric medicine and no, 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 no. that don't want just on the record. The psychiatric so, medicine. medicine. I'm referring to the knowledge because she does a healthy perspective. To have a healthy perspective to heal to change your perspective. So I'll give a piece of knowledge or a science or something that I know would be just perfect for the moment. She'll, she'll have it and she'll be in resistance, how she's in resistance. And I'll continue doing what I'm doing. Five minutes later, she'll come back. I'm sorry. Uh, it, I, it was just that you right. My bad. And she'll pause. All right, so I'm going to pause it right there. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, that, yeah. Some of her emotions, the fact that she didn't want uh, Janae, in your relationship? No. 
no. She just she wanted to be with me, but she just never felt okay with it. So she's always gonna have a fight. She's like Janae in many ways, into where she could be with him, but there's always gonna be a thing about her to where she wants to be with me, and that's always gonna be a topic. It's always gonna be a topic. Y'all so wasn't sim together similar to Janae in that way, huh? Y'all wasn't together in that video. Probably, but I couldn't tell you if it was right before or after a breakout. It was a breakup. It was so many times mm -hmm. that that happened in Puerto Rico. I don't know which time that I can't off the top. I don't remember. In this which video, y'all was talking about polygamy, like being together with. Polygamy. Yeah. So Janae had obviously is in Puerto Rico. When Janae had came to Puerto Rico, she, mm -hmm. you know, he lied to her and he was telling her that I played her into coming, that I didn't want to be with her that I help, was going along with him to help her just come so we can embarrass her online. But he's going to consider actually keeping her as a wife now. So he lied to her and he told her that. when He knew when what, me and him, our understanding of our conversation was, me and Janae have been talking for three months already. We're already getting really close. She wants to be with me. It's already a thing we're talking about. And Zoka's already open to the polygamous relationship. We had did it before in Atlanta. She's coming back to carbonation. We want her to be with us again, and she wants to be with us again, too. And Zoka's open, open to it this time. This time, this is the first time ever that Zoka wanted to do it. Okay. Zoka was open to it. So me and Zoka, we had a whole tent and everything prepared for her to come, just for him to start lying to her when she came, telling her I was playing her the whole time. And so now she's resentful of me, not knowing why. She tells me the story that she came downstairs that first night to my tent and was could have came and joined me but for whatever reason decided to turn away and go back upstairs to be with him because she felt like I was playing her and lying to her and she was not going to be welcomed and things. And so she didn't want to do that. So she turned away. She brought me gifts. She brought him some things. She brought him some food. She brought me and Zoka a bunch of gifts, special gifts that were special to us and our personalities. She came to be with us and Janae okay. and he lied to her and he lied to the public and he lied to me about that specific situation. And when I found out about that, I didn't find out about that until after I left Carbonation. Janae, and I got with Janae, and she told me what happened, what she was told. And what she went through, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? He lied to all of us, and then the internet too? He told three different stories just to get you to be with him? He's done, and this is back in Puerto Rico. Okay. So, did you truly want to be with Janae at that time? Hell yeah. I love that woman. So, because... In the videos, I can never read it, like what the true nature was. So I don't like the dumb. I don't like the dumb shit. I feel like they're smart and they're intelligent. I think they both know they want to be with me off camera. So when we get on camera and we get on the live, I'm always feeling like whatever, like whatever happens happens. Like because off camera, I'm already knowing we all want to love each other. Mm -hmm. Janae and Velvet are best friends. Excuse me, guys. Just like yesterday, they was just best friends. They were so close that when they were with Eligio, Eligio didn't like them together because they were too close to each other and ignoring him before I ever even existed. Janae and Velvet, my two baby mothers, amazing women, amazing women, have always been friends. And I find it interesting because Zoka has, Velvet has always stood up for Zoka, but in the background, we never knew this. When I got with Velvet, I got to hear Velvet's side. And Velvet side is a whole nother side to things. She's going through a lot of trauma. She not, I don't even know if I was telling you all this, but she's going through all kinds of trauma, all kinds of beatings, beatings, and things that we don't all know about. She's going through this stuff because she's fighting for our relationship. She's fighting for me and Zoka to be together. And I know Velvet to be that type of person. So I don't think she's lying to me when she tells me that. And Janae, on the other hand, Janae's always fighting to be with me, regardless if I'm if I have a partner or not. And I'm telling Janae, like, look. I have a girl. I know you like me. That doesn't mean you get to be with us. Please respect our relationship. And I always felt disrespected by Janae. So I always turned her away. Because it wasn't that she wasn't cute. It wasn't that I didn't like her. It was that she was intrusive. And she was rude. And, and disrespectful in that sense of the relationship. And to my loyalty. And I felt like. I'm, so excuse me. I'm loyal. Y'all wasn't practicing. Um polygamy at that time i thought that was kind of like we were we were but i still i was still the one who wasn't pushing for i liked it and i wanted the idea i wanted it and it ended up happening once he was just said no it's okay if you do it and we're like okay cool we're gonna do it but this is after deliberation because at first zoka is having a problem with janae because janae's coming around like i'm her man when zoka's my girl 
So what you want her to do? So Shizuoka's immediately not liking her. And it was just mm. a bad way to start. Like, I know him. I've seen him in my dreams. That's my man. And one reason why me and Janae don't really work, in my opinion, sometimes is because I felt like I wanted her to get to know me rather than to act like she did know me. And that approach early on always turned Zoka away. Mm. Aside from all of that, those women love each other. They supported each other. They help each other. Like, to this day, I'm going to just put it on the screen, but go, keep talking. Why don't he bond Zoka out? She, I didn't know that. I, I, that's stuff I think about. I think about stuff like that. But, you know, now the case is over. All kind of things are possible. All right, Finish, you said that. Okay, so you didn't really like the fact that she was trying to be in y'all relationship. But then y'all ended up being together. So I'm going to play the Correct. next video. As soon as we figured out it was okay, we did it. And it was a beautiful relationship. Me, Zoka, and Janae, loved it. Uh, and then this is how it ended. Oh, wait, is this beginning or ending? Let's listen. So this is another video from Stinson Has the Soup. Myself in. I, I don't need to be here because you're good. You're handled. You don't need me. Is that a healthy perspective? No. What should be your thoughts? I want oh. to do it. From the Virgo North Node, I should be more healthy. With the Terry? Yeah. Aries, so I have a competitive spirit. Oh, Aries, she's an Aries. Oh, these dumbasses. Nature Boy is making Zoka accept that dumbass here. What's his name? What's his name? Solar. Take on Nefertiri, whatever. Nefertiri. Actual facts and biology. This has everything to do with subjectivity. Your personal, your personal um, things that happen to you in your life that are holding you back from actually evolving into your supreme being. I stay the laughing. What comes to my mind is lower self. Me acting out and doing things like I didn't like they were having sex and I even pushed her like I was like no you're doing too much. Oh, like, this is when we broke up. Okay. This is when we broke up. That's not what happened. All right. Ooh, that's so loud in my headphones. Okay, go ahead. So y'all end up in a relationship, and now that was when we broke up. That was the day we broke up. Okay, elaborate. That was the day we broke up because we were having intercourse the night before. That's the and day Zoka, you and Zoka broke up? Uh, Janae. Janae left the relationship. It was when we broke up. Me and Zoka were still kind of together, but we kind of did a single thing, like, very shortly after that. So that's when the single thing started at Cookie's House. That's all Cookie's House. That was the beginning of Cookie's House, the ending of that. So anyway, um, they're fighting. We're We're... We're all having sex together, and me, her, and Janae. And it was fine. Everything was good. But at one point, I remember I was with Janae, and Janae, Janae, like, Zoka was doing something, and I think Janae, like, reached to Zoka for something. I don't even think it was anything bad, but Zoka took it in a bad way, and she, like, pushed her arm away, and then Janae would, like, push her away. And then they started, like, pushing each other. Then, like, Zoka, like, kicked her. She threw a kick at, at her. And then Janae, like, just got up and, like, charged at her. And I'm just like, what is going on? I, I mean, I was just mid-stroke. All of a sudden, they're fighting, and then they just stopped. They, they didn't fight, fight. Like, they didn't throw hands. It didn't get to that point. It was just those things that happened. And then it's like, yo, what are y'all doing? This bitch, this bitch. And then it was just like no clarity then. But that was when that ended. And then right after that, because of those meetings and stuff, um, Terry ended up coming to me. She ended up saying, I think that, you know, maybe I thought this was what it was supposed to be, but this is what she told me. I'm feeling called to the lion's den. And she wanted to go upstairs and be with Eligio and all the women and be famous and shine and 
you know, things like that. And she felt call, a calling for that. So she, after Zoka fought her, she said she's going to go leave and shine with Elio in the lion's den. And she's needed there. And so that's when Natiri left me. So Natiri broke up with me and left me many times for different reasons. And that was- oh, so the, she broke up with you, but y'all was on live saying that y'all was accepting each other as, so y'all was lying to the public. That was one of those No, things. you got the time zones mixed up. I just told you that's when we broke up. No, I'm talking. No, in the in the video, y'all say. Okay, go ahead. No, in that was video, a day. Yeah. In that video, that was a time frame where we broke up. That was a night. No, we I did know that, that it was. I know that y'all broke up, but I'm saying in that live, y'all was joining as she was accept. She was saying she was accepting her as polygamous, and then they later they were trying to they were trying to remedy it, but after that video, we broke up. Right. That's she, what I'm she, saying. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I'm you sure fight? She, she you, fight? You, you we talk about fights. You do you want to fight? You ain't going in the fight with me, Nick. Oh, okay. you couldn't even beat me. You couldn't beat me mentally. Oh, okay, you see this forehead? Oh, you say you're smarter <laughs> than me. You say you're smarter uh, than me. you smarter this than my me? secret weapon right here. Oh, interesting. That's funny. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're actually pretty smart, Nick. And you know what? I, I like you as a as a friend because your heart is bigger than anybody's brain I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. That's that's the way to clean it up. Thank you. You know, you 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 you're pretty cool too, Solar. But you know, you got a little animosity today. I'll I'll, Taco, I'll you know. I don't, know if you need to, I don't know if you need to get shooken up a little bit, but you got I feel a little tense like animosity. But anyway, um, ever never mind. Anyway, so. So after after that situation, y'all break up. You continue the situation with um, Zoka, and then you guys become single. So going forward from that, um, tell us what happens, like in your story. Before I get to the like, you know, in my story, I mean, I just focus as on it pertains music to at you that point. being in the group with Nature Boy the whole nine. Well, where are we going at this time? I think we were at Cookie's house planning our next trip. And we ended up doing Hawaii after this. So it's really like, really what I'm doing day to day is work. I'm working like day to day. Like I'm doing things to where I'm planning the next couple months. We're doing, I'm doing budgets and things like that. I'm just making music. I'm catching up on the albums and making sure the videos have original music, um, helping with this and that, managing this and that in the house. So. 24 seven, I'm busy. I actually, I'm always having things to do still. So I occupy myself with that, you know, and I just yeah. keep being great. And then I, I'm the type of guy to where if you leave me, I'm going to try to boss up. I'm just going to try to like level up and do better and be better. You know, I'm not going to try and be worse. I'm going to try to be better and be like, oh, this is what you missed out on, like type of vibe. And it's not like that's what I'm doing on purpose, but that's the best way for me to transition my anger, to transition my hurt, or anything like any emotions that may not be positive towards myself. Instead of beating myself up, I'd rather just work out. I'd rather just clean myself up, take a shower. You know, I've learned to laugh instead of cry. So that's how I address it. So in the relationships and how I dealt with it moving forward, it's just back and forth with the relationships on and on, striving to hopefully have that again. And I'm only focused on Jayon. I'm not really focused on the Terry. The Terry comes and goes. When she comes, I'm open to have her. I'm ready to have her. You know, Puerto Rico's even after that, you know, so after even that video, you know, Puerto Rico's after that, you know, um, I believe. Yep. So it's just been an interesting journey altogether and of self-development. And I, this is the biggest struggle that I would say me and the men went through a lot was sifting between being a healthy divine masculine and a pimp. Like pimping became a big thing. And I don't think that this was healthy at all. I'm from California. I understand pimp culture already. And I was always against it as I had seen my mother getting beaten and abused. You know what I mean? I, had, I grew up seeing that. So, and I, my dad and them, I, they have many girls and stuff. So I always look down on that. Like, I, I got a mom and a sister. And all my cousins are girls. So I'm like, man, y'all can't mistreat women. Why y'all mistreating women, bro? Like, all we, my whole family, women, like, why, how are you going to mistreat a woman? So I never liked my dad and my cousins and how they treated women at first. After going to Carbonation, and experiencing Galileo, I started thinking, damn, maybe my dad and my cousin had it figured out. Maybe we are supposed to be pimping. Maybe we are supposed to be on some pleasure because they're going to play us. They're going to just go jump around from guy to guy like, man, they're just going to break your heart. You can't be no simp. 
And so a lot of the men struggled between this and during these relationship breaks and come togethers, we're trying to be better, stronger, higher value men. We're not trying, we're not, we're not like, oh no, my girl's gone. We're like, damn, I need to level up more. And that's what we do. And that's how we transitioned it. And I mean, it's like a military mixture with our actual lives and it just was not a good recipe. Okay, in the um, conversation that you had with Gagget, you guys was talking about that y'all was actually pimping. Ain't that what you, is that what you said? <laughs> I wouldn't say we was actually pimping. Uh, I would say that I would get, we would get girls and we'd always get girls, um, carbonation guys, we'd have bachelor lives. We have lives where it's like, hey, all the guys line up. These are the guys available at carbonation. They need wives. And when we talk to these women online, a lot of the time they would support us, they would send us money or they would want to help us with certain services when we need it. Whatever it was, they would help us with things. Women would help us a lot through the guys. And if the guys got like, hey, this girl just sent me like $200, like we add it to the pot, but it's like, good job, Juju. You know, <laughs> like, and so it's a, it's a thing that they're like, yeah, like, yeah, nah, she fucked with me. Like I'd be teaching her. So this is an escape. Now Juju gets to spend a couple hours a day on the phone with some girl. Cause he's mm -hmm. teaching her, you know, and he and he, he got two hundred dollars. All right, Juju, you you all right? She might when she coming? When she coming? Oh no, nah, she gotta fix this house. She might sell her car. This this and that. Jack, that is a girl, man. She said me she just got paid. She just sent us eight hundred dollars. She 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 gonna come here. She gonna come next month. She gonna get paid again. She gonna send us another eight hundred dollars, and then she gonna come with her next check. Shit like that. So well, it wasn't like pimping. Pimping. And no, I wouldn't consider that pimping. What what Ali Hill was doing and what we were studying was pimping. And so the mindsets are being built to dis, to dis, to separate from the actual emotions and the actual sacredness of a relationship and a bond and a connection and just keep it strictly business. And so it's helping the guys cope with their inaccessibility to money, to women and money, actually both. And when they can attain money or women, which is usually one package, they gain other benefits in the group. They can get more food. They can get nicer snacks. They can, they can, now they can request something from the go out team when we go out. Hey man, give me a, one of them, man. All right, you bought it $200, get you a little something. And we'll be back, you know, it's stuff like that. So it's always, that's, this is a life. This is every day. You know, these guys are deprived of so many things that this is the this has become one of the ways to get things because the women that are there we can't be with them so when those seasons come around we're going live we're getting cleaned up we're doing the whole barber thing we're doing the bachelor lives we're doing like hey we need wives yeah we're polygamous we're teaching panels of women and stuff like that but the guys i wouldn't say we were even doing it maliciously then we were honestly teaching what we thought to be true we were honestly evolving and growing where we thought we needed to grow i would say Eligio was one of the more only people who was conscious that we were using this as a facade just to pull in women for women for another agenda his agenda is what breeding his children together his agenda is different his agenda ain't nothing that the guys even know about i know more than what they know about what alihio really want to do because i'm riding with him every day we're going to different countries together nobody else i'm spending all me and ali I, i'm teaching i'm educating this nigga all damn day so at the end of the day, you know me, I talk. So he, he listen. We he know how to listen when it's time to listen. So you got and he, you you he and asked the right questions. You and Nature Boy was traveling by you you got yourselves to different countries? Yeah, like say we're scouting real estate or or he wants he just takes him and the wives and it'll be me and Zoka and we'll go we'll travel to like another country. All, all every we'll trust everybody to be okay wherever they at. We'll go travel different places, just us, because he, he don't really need nobody else. I got all the money. I can still make sure everything paid back there. I can still make all the moves. I can tell all the guys what to do still from my phone. I'm the ultimate conduit. So just keep me right next to him. I can help him have a luxurious experience wherever we go. And I'm plugging him in. I'm like, all right, don't worry about going to this hotel. Fuck all those hotels. So Let me you call have, you have I'm going to call, I'm gonna call the chocolate you man. Have. The chocolate man is a realtor in Palenque. He going to get us this spot. His cousin owned the spot. He gets us his beautiful, nice, immaculate spots. That's why you bring me around. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shortcut you through stuff. I'm going to do things. So, Yeah, so you were like the treasurer. You had control of the pot or you had your own money? Not, you? so, not solely. Uh, both. I had my own money. I wasn't. After a while, I stopped reporting it. I got a lot of cash apps on my own. I would do readings for people on my own and things like that. People would just send me money anyway. People just fucked with me and would send me money all the time. I, at first, I would report it and share it. 
and then we I used to get in trouble for it, and then I stopped making money altogether, and then I just kept, people would keep making sending me money, so I would just start not telling nobody about my cash apps, and when we would go out, I would and I got stuff, I would just get it from my money, you know, and so we don't have to account for it when we do all the accounting because it was me and a couple other guys to do the accounting together. I just I have the wallets, I have the passwords, the pa- codes, and all, that's me. And and loyal, who Lamar, R.I.P. Jamar, um, not John Jamar, Amar Jaway, excuse me, put it together, Amar Jaway, R.I.P. Him, bro, because me and him, we ran everything. He's a tech guy, so if I need something, I need something moved, he'll do it. Now, all I gotta do is call it. So I'm executive. I am calling shots. That's why you keep me. I'm just, just it. That's all I do. Okay. That's all I need to do. So there's a video, and um, I shared it in. The interview that we did, like, well, I think we did like a phone conversation and I input the video into there. So there was a conversation amongst, uh, I think uh, Loyo had his own like video where he said that he would try to be like a better wife to Nature Boy than the wives. And then there was a conversation that you had with Nature Boy and with Pice. And you guys were talking about um, top, bottom, and stuff like that. Do you remember that video? Uh, was it in Panama? You guys were talking about, I don't know where you guys were. You guys were talking about like. Because at that time, Pice was talking about, so careful how you involve me in that. Because Pice was talking about, it was messy. Pice was talking about how he was a bisexual male publicly. And he was going on live about that. And we were doing debates and talking to people online how they felt about that type of thing. And Pice was just explaining, like, what it's like. Another person was Denetric, Kite. He was another guy who was openly doing that. So Pice and Kite at the time were coming out and saying, hey, we're gatekeepers or we're bisexual. We'll have extra wives, but we'll also have extra husbands. They were saying that at the time. So that's why they were debating and talking about that. I just happened to be a part of Carbonation. Okay. So the reason why I ask you this is because, and this ain't my question, this is from Mm -hmm. the audience. At that time, there was a lot of videos of him saying, like they were teaching about like, uh, like being like bisexual or like things like that. Like, was that a requirement for the men to join into carbonation? No, that's a horrible rumor too. No, no, it was never a thing. But it, I would say that it was always welcomed and it was welcomed from in different areas. It was welcomed from the very beginning of Carbonation. I think it's always been welcomed from Alihio. He's always had that door open for, uh, he's always championed for bisexual or homosexual people. He's always like stood up for them as oracles and gatekeepers. And he's always taught, taught them that and taught us that. And so when we think of them, we don't think bad of them. You know, we're just like, oh, you're just a two spirit being. You're, you have a lot of feminine energy in a masculine body. That's all that is. So we always just looked at it in that way. And so we, if somebody was to come who was like that, we would welcome them. And we would assume that they'd have their divine relationship like everybody else. Because we all are expecting to have a partner there. Okay. All right. So let's move ahead. I think the next video is... What was the next video? We'll go to Atlanta. Or, or no, like bring us up to Atlanta before I pull up videos of Atlanta. So, which Atlanta? New Atlanta, old Atlanta. This is Atlanta's a couple times. Old Atlanta. Uh, old Atlanta? The end of so Cookie's house. I want, I want you to give us like a transition of what's going on until we get to Atlanta and then I'll start asking questions about Atlanta. That's a lot, girl. You know, you don't know what you're asking for. That's why I guess. But, Atlanta I mean, is twice. One, I'll, I'll do. I'll do you one like this. I got you like this. Atlanta one was Cookie's house, and that was right after that we ended up going to Hawaii. Atlanta two was after Puerto Rico, which is after all the deportations from Panama and all that stuff. This is way later on. This is after Hawaii. This is after all that. Atlanta number two is um at, at the house we get for Lee Hill in Puerto Rico, which is the house he was arrested at. Mm-hmm. And that was the last house that we were we were at in Atlanta. That's the second time we were in Atlanta. And the second between the, those time frames is just a lot of traveling, a lot of carbonation BS, a lot of drama in between. There's so many things that I could probably talk about from in between that it's too much. So those two 
points the second time first from the first time in Atlanta we're living with Mama Cookie Velvet's there um she's going back and forth they have a domestic violence case started there because he's beating on her he done like broke the toilet with his with her head and stuff like that and she got the police there the CPS is there and whatnot and that's a whole nother scenario and that was Cookie House one and um that was also where the baby love was conceived that's also where that pregnancy journey started Atlanta number two was when it's after all kind of effery and we get to that house where Amar and they had plotted it out got bought it Airbnb it was like a they set it up to be an Airbnb but we never Airbnb it we just made it really really nice at least he ended up just living in it and mm -hmm. got him a rental car got him an infinity all kind of stuff we couldn't afford and um so we have all this stuff and we're thinking now the group is more already indoctrinated from different things a lot of the group is in puerto rico and then a lot of us end up in atlanta and then a lot of us go to philadelphia so a large group the whole group is in philly while only a couple people are in atlanta with him so it's been like that atlanta was a place where he'd be alone with the girls a lot with his wives and we would be in different places i would even go to vegas sometimes <clears throat> you know what i'm saying so it was very interesting at this time new atlanta this was when we were transitioning more to drama and entertainment rather than knowledge so we're getting out of the jungles we're no longer doing that now we're just on bigo entertaining people doing gimmicks dress ups dance parties you know things like that smoking and drinking that's when all that started it was new atlanta so that was also the fall of everything let's let that be a spiritual message yeah okay and then take us to old atlanta all in Atlanta was Mama Cookie's house. We Tori was there. Um, a lot of people were there at that time. People were back and forth at that time. Eliana was brand new to the world. Um, oh, I mean, like, new. you know, towards the end. My bad. That's New Atlanta. So, new yeah. Atlanta, my bad. The New Atlanta. So, yeah, New Atlanta, that's when we on Bego. That's when we're, like, doing all the 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 different streaming applications, the sign that lives, they're doing the Zooms, they're doing porn. He's doing porn now, you know. He's doing like these porn pornographic wait, 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 wait. Watch the the word, the word. Say, I'm say, sorry. We talking about it. Adult Damn. films. He he was doing things that you know we don't know about, and you know it, it was just yeah, it just transitioned. And at this point, I was already arguing with him every day. Like in New Atlanta, I was already arguing with him every day already because in in Philly, I was standing up for myself like bro you're not gonna tell me i am not like important like you keep saying that you're god and we're just in, we're just imagine parts of your imagination and servants you that's not the case i'm the main character in the game you can be the king but i'm always gonna be like the main character i'm never gonna not feel that way like you tripping if you want me to let that that piece of me go like that's not even with the knowledge so your knowledge isn't even enough for me to do that and so i'm arguing this shit every time i can for like a year two years and um sometimes it just is what it is right so i never kind of said i'm there for the truth and i always stood for that and at the end of the day new atlanta was just it was just all bad it was tumultuous he's playing with uh demons from the the lesser solomon key uh, he's doing things he shouldn't be doing playing with spirits he's playing with like every god from every religion he's like taunting them making use of them abusing their natures and just like and acting like he's them in different ways and it's just not a good look i mean whether you believe in that stuff or not it's just like spiritually for spiritual people that's if you don't know if you're not a spiritual person that's not a good look to sit there and mock anybody's deity if you will and if you're not a spiritual person we'll just put it like this he started to embody all these different characters that started to give him uh the the aspect of hysteria mm -hmm. okay and so that's what you started to experience towards the end was multiple characters um him try, not really ever being himself but constantly every day creating a character creating this trying to create this dream world for people to live in and he literally was trying to do this like create this dream world to encapsulate and keep women in an illusion this was his whole goal ask him this is i don't know people don't talk about this much he's playing 
Willy Wonka music and doing all these programming things and trying to use all these cues. And he's literally every single day trying to make it like a, a fantasy to capture your mind for women. And this is what New Atlanta was about. And all so right. the guys really played the back role on this on New Atlanta. We're just the machine at this point for real for me. We're not doing our music. We're not focusing on us. We're just doing a hand focusing on him and that's when everything was going really bad that's when, that's when everybody started abusing each other behind the scenes started slapping him telling people to slap each other it was always him telling people to slap each other no one's going around slapping each other if you want to he's it's only when he tells people to slap another person no one gets mad at the person because they're like hey he told me they're like it's cool chief's orders oh okay let me get it together yeah and that started becoming regular they didn't do it to me a lot they never they really never did it to me Eligio did it to me one time when he did it to me he said hey I'm gonna do the slap he let me know and we were on live and I'm like all right cool to do I right, do it I was cool with it because we're having this we're programming their subconscious mind mm-hmm. and so I didn't care so the internet went crazy about it but I was trying to tell my guys it's not that serious we we're acting so I will champion I always said like yo we were acting we were acting because we were it wasn't a good move it wasn't a good look no it was a bad show but we were acting indeed when certain things would happen we got bad was when the camera was off and this was still happening to everybody else and people are still getting slapped up off camera when women are really are getting their heads stomped on when women are getting kicked in the stomach like the different all right i'm gonna like play from the i'm gonna pause you right there and i'm gonna i'm gonna since you bring up you know all of those things so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna play a video from that time and then we're gonna that's go. new atlanta i was just telling you about new atlanta okay let me um where is that video that was crazy. Hold on. All right, so That's this video. Was, I was rebelling like a mug in New Atlanta. Okay. Hold on. What is the title? Hold on one second. Oh, Leisure Bitch. Okay, hold on. Let me put it up here. Well, you got an arsenal talking about you don't have it planned out. You lied. You I don't arsenal. take me long. It don't take me uh, long. This is off the top. This is off the top. I, no, I had to get links before. Like, it took me like an hour to get some links that week so we could talk about. But, okay, um, all right. all right. You got a pool of links, okay. Yeah. So, this video is from um, Lisa Say What. And Lisa, she, and it says, Elysia Bishop, you got her blocked? Yeah. Why? She abuses our personal relationship for information. And I don't like it anymore. But she's a good, I, I mean, I, she's doing her thing. Okay. I just so, can't have a personal relationship with her anymore because it's not real. Okay. All right. So this is the time that you were just speaking about. No fucking God, nigga. Fuck this phone, nigga. I made this phone. Yep. I made you. This nigga. is it. Ever disrespect God, nigga. Uh, yeah, this one. See. All right. So. You said that's the one that he didn't tell you about? Yeah, no, that is that's the one he told me. The other one I just knew because we already talked about it. That one right there is when he told me. Oh, okay, he said yeah, like I, I I'm about to it. It, it was embarrassing because Zoka was right there, but it was like whatever. You probably so, gotta do it, but we're doing it. it so only you thinking. guys, so everybody else thought that it was real. Only y'all knew that y'all was pretending. No, they know it was pretend to. We talk about it publicly. That's what I'm telling you is that the problem was when off camera it started to happen more. When it was supposed to be a show, supposed to be for the camera, supposed to be programming them to be submissive to the black man. That was the goal. Whereas when it started happening off camera, it's like, all right, this is how we live in now. Like now if somebody says something crazy, they got to get slapped. So everybody's starting to walk around weird at this point for sure. Okay, and at this now, point, this is there, a weird was, season. there was a video where you guys were, they played a little clip of it in the trial where he was like, um, saying that he was God and all this stuff, right? But in the clip, he had put Pice in the corner, or was that Caliber? It was Pice or Caliber he put in the corner. Y'all was all in the bathroom. And I think he, I don't know if he had like a robe on or whatever. So I want to know, did he ever do that to you or what happened? What do you mean? Did I ever like, get put in a corner? Did he ever try to put you in a corner or say like, you know. So one time I had to go in a corner 
Uh, a lot of people don't know this one. Velvet had just came back. Uh, we just got back from Hawaii. Velvet had just came back to the group right when he got back to Cali. Mm-hmm. Everybody just got back from Hawaii, from the, from jail. Velvet's coming back to the group at this point. Velvet's walking in the door. We're so excited to see her. Everybody picks her up. Tron picks her up and hugs her like crazy. I'm like, oh, yo, I'm about to show her my love. She come over there. She comes over to me. I pick her up. I pick her up this big, beautiful hug. And it's just like, oh, good. And she's good with it, too. And then Aliyah was like, hey. Why are you picking her up all night? What are you doing? Why are you doing all that? I'm like, he just did it. Like, what's the problem? I'm just happy to see her. What are you talking about? He's mm-hmm. like, oh, no. They, they knew each other. They knew each other before you came here. They know each other for years. They're friends. Y'all not friends. Why y'all do? Why'd you do it? Why did you do it? Do you, you try to be my wife? You try to have my wife? And he started doing all that. And it was just like, oh, my God, sitting there for like 45 minutes of him just saying shit like that. Just uh, having to sit there at attention like military mode, right? That's what we're used to. And then mm-hmm. the final punishment is I got to stand in, in the corner until further notice. And I end up standing in the corner for like five hours, but I'm not really like, I'm like, I, I'm like, dang, I just picked up his wife. Like, I guess I should have did Oh, that. you didn't think like I'm a grown, hey man, like I'm not about to be standing. No, nah, I was actually thinking at this time, I was thinking I was getting, he demoted me and everything. And I'm like, damn, I just picked up the boss's wife. Uh-huh. And swung her around in a hug. And I'm just supposed to be like the top soldier. So it's like, to me, I thought it was cool because it was real. But I got in trouble for that shit. And that was one time I got in a corner. Then the other time he put me in a corner is with the day I left. He told me to go in the corner. And as I was walking over to the corner. This was, was like, when he was he was in jail at this time? He was time? in jail. Yeah, it was okay. over the phone. I was actually about to get him out. I was about to uh, get him out. I had the papers and everything. This was that day. I was letting him know. And when I was letting him know, he's like, you think I did it? You think I did it, huh? Hey, guys, Sola thinks I'm guilty. Sola thinks I did it. He thinks I need this help. We ain't never need your help because I ain't never really been guilty. The universe protects me. The universe is getting me out there. I'm like, oh, all right. He's like, and he told me I can just go to the corner because I think he, he did it. I'm like, all right, whatever. So I'm going to the corner. Like, yeah, we might as well we start slapping this nigga. Yeah, and he's saying all this as I'm walking to, oh, it's turning to my desk. And I'm like, I turn around. I'm like, hold on, bro. I ain't even do shit right now. You ain't about to try to make an example out of me right now. Mm-hmm. Call me. The, and this is because the meetings go forever. They go through your demons and they say this and that. I said, bro. So y'all had like a phone. Say, like hold on. Let me say this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I said, I said, bro. I know you could say that I got demons. You could say I'm the devil itself. You can call, you call me Satan itself. I don't care. It's time for me to leave. It's time for me to go. And I was turning around. I just couldn't do it. And I'm like, you're not about to make an example out of me. I'm about to get you out of jail. Fuck is wrong with you. And you just told me every other time I got you out of jail, I didn't get you out of jail out of all the shit that I did. I'm like, well, let me go. And that was my argument. I said, let me go to somewhere where I'm valuable. If, if, I, if I didn't do that, I thought that's what I was doing here. I thought I was valuable here. Let me leave and go somewhere where I'm valuable. And because of that, Pice and Musa left with me as well that same day. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, and then... Would he put yeah, them in the corner too? Like, he would put all... Because I seen there was videos of him putting... Everything. All the time. Everybody everybody would go in the corners for different reasons. It just depends on, like, what you did or how you messed up. Did you, like... Let's say, let's say somebody was in a car and they bumped the car into something. They'd go in the corner, like, for... Where they wouldn't feel bad about it. They'd be like, damn, they had to fuck up. You know, or say one of the girls that where it really gets twisted, I would say, is when it's with the girls and him, because he would put the girls in corners for completely different reasons, like controlling and manipulation reasons. For the guys, it would be like if if me if me and True and, and Musa, if we chose a team, if we chose to put one of the guys in the corner, it's cause they wilding out. They trip, they acting like bro, don't like you tripping. So y'all could put each other on, on, some, in the on some human, normal, young, young dude shit. You tripping. Mm-hmm. You need to go, go in the corner. Like, like, cause that would be either that, push-ups, workouts, cleaning, military stuff. The corner is easy. The corner is easy. We let Alihio do the corner orders. We don't do we don't really tell people to go to the corner. So did y'all ever put him in the corner? Who? Nature boy. Yeah, I would say so. So he was he yeah he yeah he had times where y'all like held him accountable and was like no you messed up now you go in the corner. Yeah yeah um and we had the assistance of the DeKalb County. Now he's in a corner for thirty years. 
Oh, okay. Anyways, so let's move on. <laughs> so, all right. So you guys are there and he starts to do the three God thing. He turns into a uh, three God. So let's- I'm let's teaching him about um, vortex mathematics. I'm teaching him 36912, energy, frequency, vibration, ether. I was teaching him what Tesla taught and how the pyramids work. I was teaching him really good zero point energy mathematics and he abused it. And he started telling people, I'm three God, three, three, three. You have to say three a million times to get a million dollars. Started doing stuff like that. You got to do it. This counts as saying it one time. This counts as doing it one time. Time everybody do all these things that make threes. Oh, it's three. That's a three. This is threes. Threes. You got to hold threes. Anytime you have a three, you can, you're, you're, that's another three. It counts towards me. And that means the more we do it, I can make more money. And that's what he was using it for. And that's what he taught it and promoted it as. And he also was saying aliens are going to come and pick him up. And the aliens are going to come and pick him up and take him away because he speaks their language and he's finally done loading and evolving while he's making fun of demons from the Goetia and claiming to be them. Mm -hmm. and, and it's sad because the demise he's suffering is the exact depiction of what the demon he decided to play with is. So I digress on that one. All right, so I'm yeah. going to play a little bit of it. Yeah, go ahead. Weird stuff. This is all unscripted. We didn't know what he was going to do at these when he had whenever he has paint on his face. Yeah, we don't know what he's going to do. We have no idea what he's going to say at these times. We just setting up the cameras at this point. First of all, I would like to ask you, um, where did you get the name, the, the title Three God? Where did that come from? This, this and why are you calling so yourself much. God now? Where did that come from? A three, a three, a three, a three, a three, a three, a three. Ah, I, I am three God. I am from a distant constellation. Told you. The fuck? I have hijacked the, the body of this being. And I. The girl at the bottom is so comedy. <laughs> Cause she is like, what? The sign that his wife was not having Girl, it, yo. Same. She was not having same. it. She's seen right through but it. I just know that it's a performance, but same. I'm at 60% down before I am your God. All of the African American people are my people. Are we? I am your God. I am the three God. I come in three. <laughs> this isn't real. This isn't real. <laughs> um, this got to be some type of um cult that that yes. you're doing here, brother. And yes. a lot of people are saying things like you are putting a heavy spell on the people, like the women and the brothers. Um, what do, what is your response to that? Bust the rhymes. That's bust the rhymes. That's bust the rhymes. My name is Cop. I am a cop. America. America. I am a cop. Child, first of all, first thing he said was, <laughs> all right, so I'm going to pause right there. But look at Sonetta is busting up. That is so crazy. So my question is, did y'all really think that he was God? Oh, you asking me to stop the commentary. No. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to say this. I could be wrong for everybody, but I'm going to say a big no. And... I would say that it was a yes man mentality to where everybody would just agree with it at a certain point. Niggas is tired. People want to go to sleep. People haven't ate all day. People want to eat. People got other things on their agenda to do. It's been five hours. I'm still arguing with him how if he's God, then I'm God. And if I'm not God, then he's not God. And it's, it, it's been hours and they're tired of it. They're just like, bro, shut up, Solar. Bro, he's God, bro. Like, we're pieces of his imagination. You don't get it yet, bro. We losing respect for you. 
we thought you were smarter than this. I'm like, are y'all niggas testing me right now? Like, I'm like, are you kidding me? That's what I'm telling y'all. For like a year and a half, two years, I'm arguing with him all the time. I'm always getting in trouble every time he's doing a live because I'm like, mm, not really. And he's always like, oh, you don't know your rank. You're disrespecting the rank. Oh, you want to be me. This was one of the biggest gaslighting. You're trying to be me. Oh, you just want to be me. You just want to be me. No, nigga, you teaching the wrong shit. You lying now. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. That's not what we came here teaching. Why are you teaching that now? That's not what, I don't agree with that because that's new. That's not what we was ever on. What are you talking about? I'm arguing that. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm passing a test and I'm going to be ranked up for it in the end. While everybody else is submitting, submitting, submitting. The only person who ever supported me was Janae. And Janae was the only person who said, guys, Solar's right. Like, why are you guys saying that too? That is true. That's not in alignment with the knowledge. He's not keeping the knowledge. I think this is a test too. I think it's a test. I'm siding with Solar. Janae did that in front of everybody against everybody with me. And um, she ended up going out. Oh, well, I guess he is God. I guess we're not God. She ended up oh, backing that? out on, on the other same night because they wanted to go to sleep. Everybody was cussing each other out. They just hitting each other like, mm, like it's like, come on, like, come on, like, it's that. Like, they're not, they don't care. No one really cares if he's God or not. It's a show at this point. We're, we're hoping to get rich. All we're right, hoping to get rich and popular at that right, point. Like, and, and carbonation, so. All right, so I'm going to play the next video where he basically, and I guess this sounds like this must have been around the same time when um, you and Janae kind of tell him like, um, Solar's right, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if that was on camera. I don't even know if that was live. I just remember us being in a room, it was dark. No, I no, don't no. know if the camera was on that night. No, I'm saying around this time of the next video. Yeah, Not it would be yet. upstairs in Atlanta, yeah. Okay, so let me play the next one. When I already know what's on you gonna play. Go ahead. What am I about to play? Yeah, you gonna play the one where he turns the lights on. This is when I was moving the fan around and he's giving us the prophecy of what's going to happen. Maybe. Here's what's going to happen in my story, guys. Um, Solar is going to... Know my life. Me and he's going to go with Natiri. And they're going to start their own um, thingy. You know, trolling me. You know, it's the whole thing is coming. Solar and the Tiri are gonna be their own chief and goddess. Solar, blink twice if you want to leave. All right. In my head, I was like, <laughs> in my, I swear to you, boy, I was like. So at that I'm time, he every said single day you wanted to leave. But I'm arguing with him every single day at this point. That's why he's doing this. Because me and Janae keep challenging him. Mm -hmm. Not only does he not want to be with him, he want to be with me. And I'm teaching Janae a whole nother level of knowledge at the time. That he's jumping around parading as these different beings and stuff. I'm actually with me. She's with me again. I'm not with Zoka no more. Zoka with him now. She's old news now. Now me and Janae are together. And that's my that's my main jaw now. Now Janae has become my main and single soul wife. Mm -hmm. And at this time, I'm teaching her all kind of outer world stuff. And we're like, and she's like, you're my man. Okay, yeah. And it never went back from then because it's like he on some, some loony stuff at that point. And to me, it wasn't like, get away from him. Look out for myself. I think that is lame to do. I was there with him. I was trying to help him through this stuff. I was sitting day to day talking with him. I will sit down and argue with him about it. I will go outside and spend as much time with him to see, to connect and to, to see different ways in which I can help bring clarity. I'm teaching every day. To me, he's a student of mine. I don't care. I never looked at him as a student of mine. I just looked, that's how life works. You're a student whether you want to be or not. You're going to learn from your kids. You're going to learn from your students as a teacher in a school. It is what it is. So I'm being an asset by providing as much knowledge and information to the messiah or to the, i didn't look at him as a messiah i know what a messiah is everybody's a messiah i never looked at him as jesus never looked at him as messiah i never looked at him as god that is what everybody did they may have believed that shit. i never did that was never my thing because i know the knowledge and know the truth i know that if you're a messiah that means you bring a message we all bring a message we all can connect to source or into our ones to our sacred ways how are you gonna claim to be jesus and then you try, try to be the conduit to god for other people Nigga, that's the Antichrist. 
Jesus would want you to connect to God directly for yourself. You want telling people that they have to go through you now. We did not start carbonation saying that. We said, eat in the dirt. Mm -hmm. We started eating alkaline. We started getting away from electric, uh, from uh, harmful electric energy, impulses and grids and frequencies. We were focusing on that. How, when did it become about worshiping you as the God of black people? When did that happen? I never signed up for that or agreed to it. Or at any time you said, uh, if he was God or, or yes, my God, I didn't call him that. I'll say chief, yo, chief, yo, chief. I'll call him that. I don't want to call him no God, hey, my God, my, my, my God. Did not like that. I, anytime we had to call him my Lord or my this or that, I did never like those because I felt, I always knew, Lord, it's not, you're not supposed to do that. But that's what you want to do. Maybe the lesson is discipline. I don't get it. Respect order. This is the other thing for me. I will allow shit to go, to go, excuse me. I'll allow things to go by because I respect order and structure when I'm in a certain position. I expect to be respected in a certain way myself. So when I'm in a lower position, I don't care what the structure is, I'm going to play my role. Mm -hmm. I can work any job. My resume is beautiful because I can go in at a low position and work my way up as an asset rather than demanding or being entitled. I'm not that guy. Because when I get here, you guys are going to know why I'm here. Because I earned it. Mm -hmm. That's how I am. So I'm, I'm playing myself with self-growth. So spiritual immaturity, I'll, I'll coin it again. Spiritual immaturity. Doing what was right for, for my energies and really trying to develop in the wrong places. Focusing on the wrong things at the wrong times, at the wrong priorities. You know, but I didn't know what I didn't know. So it just took time. It took moments for me to break out of that spell. It, there was a Jamaican guy who, when I was at the house, he would message me. He would send me like hella voice messages and with a Jamaican tongue, patois. And he would be telling me my power. He would be telling me how Jamaicans are, telling me what Jamaicans are like in Jamaica, how we think and how we move and how he agrees with all the knowledge. But the way we live in this thing, right? How I'm supposed to be stepping out, doing this, doing that. And I'm listening to it in the shower on the low because no one can hear it. And I'm, I'll go in the shower and I'll listen to these messages over and over again because I'm like, I know I got to leave, bro. I'm not supposed to be here. I should be doing something way bigger, way greater. This ain't even right. What is this? This is a shit show. I don't, like, I, I'm doing this a couple months, you know, at the end because it, I'm at, I'm, in Philly, I wanted to leave. I contemplated leaving in Philly so many times, just walking out in the snow, like, bro, they, they ain't not going to find me. I know where to go. I got money. I got everything. I can take my computer. I'm good. I got food stamps. I got all these different things. I'm in Philly. I'm good. I'm going, I'm going to go kick it with free. So I'm going to kick it with these guys. Cause at the time that's who I was able to talk to. And I'm like, I'm, I got to get out of this, but I didn't do it. I ended up staying because, and this is why I stayed. Jaomi was there and I had a package coming for him with some clothes and I wanted to receive that package. I want to give it to him. And Jaomi is true and Sheba's um, son, correct? Correct, correct. And I remember um, he made me think of them as family again. And I felt like me leaving was abandoning everybody. And I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And that was back when we were in Philadelphia when it was snowing, so it was wintertime. Whenever anybody wants to find that timestamp, you know, that's when I was many nights. I was just going to get up and leave in the middle of the night. Just be gone. I have all the opportunity. I got everything very good. Everybody good. I just never did it. And um, it was maybe not even a year later. It was over. Everything was over. So no, it wasn't a year from that first feeling. So it was, it was, it's been some time. It's been about two years. I was really against it, um, things in the beginning, though, completely just like, dang, I'm more messed up than I thought. I'm more of a simp than I thought. Bro, I'm, I'm, I don't know how to handle women. Dang, I don't, I'm, I don't know nothing. Um, I, my, I, I think I'm supposed to be a superstar, but I need to learn how to be this guy. You know, I keep thinking I'm this, but oh, those dreams were given to me by the system. I'm really supposed to just do this, you know? And so I looked for a father figure. I looked for a guide. I looked for a teacher and I wanted to find the truth. And I went to somebody and I found out truths but it wasn't from him and it was about life it was through life 
through the scenario, but the universe did unveil to me a, a very encoded arcane knowledge that I now use and predicate everything I do on every day on. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for that whole journey. So now I stand in my power. Now I stand on truth and I stand for the youth. I stand for generations and they're under attack right now in a major way through media, if you haven't noticed. So this is entertainment. This is all good and fun. I know a lot of adults are going to watch this, but with what I'm doing, I'm there for the children. I'm there for the majority of people who work with me are single mothers because there's no men around them giving them direct truth. And the men who I do or who want to elevate and understand more about life so that they can make better decisions for the family unit and, or for them starting with themselves. And then there's other, you know, people, men who they, uh, they get it and they do want to raise their value and they, they're just looking to gain value in community wherever they can, you know what I mean? In different ways. So shout out to those who choose themselves and who choose to elevate and build their value for whatever that means. The best way to love other people, in my opinion, is to be overflowing with that love. Give them the best version of you. Give them the most healed version of you. I have not always done that. And that's what led me into this type of life to where I put other people before me. I put other situations before me and I completely let go of all of my power. Now I teach sovereignty in all dimensions, which is taking all of your power back and then giving from that loving sacred space, from, from your value, from you giving to yourself, understanding more of who you are. So you're not distracted by other people. You're not distracted within yourself. Do you have like you online classes? You have people who were not in a purpose and it distracted us further off of ours. And we're just a group of distracted people or people call lost souls. Go ahead. I said you, you have, um, when you, you do these, like on, you do that with like online classes. Yeah, I have an app. So when people do join my school, I have multiple tiers to my school. I'm considering making the first tier free considering it. Um, just because I feel like everybody should have access to it, but my other tiers get more personal and there's a, so much that I offer in my apps. I have courses, I have um, libraries and there's curriculums and things that I have that I want to offer, but those are in the higher tiers because there are things that I've cultivated and specialized and have been using for years and have been using with other students for years and they are successful with it, you know, but it was a network before. Now I'm really enforcing this, the school aspect. So astral school of everything. I'm not just teaching you stuff. Our focus That's is how they find the on app, our purpose. Schools of everything. It's like a think of it like Hogwarts. You know, think of it like a magician. If they right? wanted to look for the app. They type in Astro School of no. Everything. They can go to my. They can go to any of my social medias. You'll find the links, and they'll contact me. And when they contact me, I'll send them. I'll send them a very special link, depending on what they request. When you have access to the community, which I'll give people snippets of through videos and posts on my Instagram, which will be free. Or sometimes I'll do videos on YouTube that will also be in my school. I'll put those on YouTube so you can see some of the things that I also do. You can do that. But the app has literal courses for you to go through. And for example, completing courses would up your rank within the app, which would allow you to gain access to different things that I have available to people. So I don't make everything available off it. Because number one, you need prerequisite knowledge to understand certain things. So I organize it in that way. And number two, I feel like we shouldn't get access to all the, the treasure troves of, of knowledge that I've accumulated over many years if you're not going to care about it and value it. So once you get through the courses, you guys unlock what I call the chamber of secrets, which I love. But deeper than that, I have more things for people. The school has giveaways. There's money, a lot of money making opportunities. There's a lot of things that I'm going to be offering to the people for free if they choose to participate, you know, willingly to evolve themselves. And so, like I said, I'll say it one more time is that it stems, it starts with you, but then it starts to trickle to like, especially like single mothers is where I see it the most. Immediately they implement these things with their kids and immediately they start seeing the transition. I get phone calls, I get donations, money sent all the time as thank yous, pictures. They send me pictures that I'm creating I feel like I like, and this is before I even had the school. I was already doing stuff like this. This this shows me that's my role. I don't care what y'all say. I'm changing kids' lives. Kids are getting their lives together, getting a, a proper understanding of the media and how life works, who they are, and being able to own that rather than doing what they think they need to do or what they're programmed to do. They're knowing who they are and what they want to do. They're locking into their purpose early. The parent, the, what? don't expect your kids to do it if you're not doing it, parent. So right. it starts with you. And I just want to say that that's the best gift I can give to my kids, my baby mothers, 
uh, future, my, my current partners, like, and everything to come in the future, I want to give y'all the best, most skilled version of me. And I think that's very noble for anyone to say, especially if you do their work to make it happen. So that's what we on. That's what we're doing over here at Ashe, Astral School of Everything, you know, sovereignty in all dimensions, but you must have knowledge of all dimensions to have sovereignty in them. Okay, that's nice. I like the, I like somebody doing something positive. It's the opposite of what carbonation was. It's the opposite, literally. And you just can do it through an app. You only gotta live with me. One day, I'd love to have like a Hogwarts type of facility, like a big. I was in a mansion the other day, and it was so big. I'm like, yo, this would be crazy to have. This is like an actual school where it's just activities that is helping and for our purpose and studios. It basically what carbonation could have been, but wasn't. You know, so I am still, you know, very much into all of my crafts, my productions, like I stated from my intro. If you don't know what I do, you go to my intro. I do way more than that. I do graphic designing. I do, I build websites. I build businesses from the ground up for people. I teach all kinds of different things. I'm just not a financial advisor. I just know some secrets. I know some codes. I know some people. So I give that sauce away to people who choose to gain that access to me or even if they care. So it starts with questions. So as the question is being inquisitive, all you got to do is get in contact with me. That's your first step. If you can't even do that, then I mean, you know, the, the internet is a vast place. You can find whatever you need to find on there. I'm just going to help you do it easier. I'm just GPS. But good luck getting to where you need to go without a map, without GPS. You could do it. You can still get there, but good luck. You know, I'd rather do it with your GPS. It's going to cost me too much time, energy, life force. I don't have time for mistakes. I got kids. I don't have time to be dabbling and dibbling, dabbling in things that are outside of my purpose anymore. I don't got time to have habits that are going to be self-destructive anymore. I got little people now, you know what I'm saying? It changes things. So I just want to say that, you know, it, it's predicated on, on generational wealth and building generational wealth long term. Oh, okay. So um, they go to your what your um, Instagram to be able to Instagram, uh, YouTube. If you have me on Facebook, um, you can find me there. And uh, very easy. If you, you'll see my links everywhere, you can email me. My phone number has been the same phone number since forever. You can, and I do use that for the school. So feel free to if you get my number or you see my number, or you see the messaging buttons. Feel free to use those messaging buttons. Any way that you like to contact or communicate go for it get in touch with me i don't care what your money is like there is a pricing system but i'm really here for people who, who care so make that clear enough i'm gonna give you what i what i charge but if things are an issue with people i don't mind working with people who care i do giveaways i do free stuff all the time like you guys have no idea so just tap in like at the end of the day it's gonna cost you too much it, you don't want to go through what i went through that's what happens when you don't have your purpose. That's what happens when you don't believe in yourself. That's what happens when you put others first. It's that whole scenario that I went through. You know, that's why I'm, I will live. I live now teaching this, this new lesson of sovereignty in all dimensions. It requires responsibility, but it gives you your power back. I learned how to do that. Yeah. And redemption is a process. It's not given to you. You got to do some work. You got you to gotta actually get it back. You can't just say, oh, I got away from him. I'm free now. No, you still had things that brought you into that. And there's things right. that you probably took from it too. So you got to just be real all the way around. I, I digress. All right. So going back to Nature Boy and you saying that there was like a year span where you started to kind of like check out and kind of start arguing with him and start to not really follow the direction that he was trying to go in. You guys. I mean, they did it. They followed it. I guess it was just resistance heavy at this time. People are leaving. The women are leaving every other day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so, heavy resistance in every area. Yeah. My question is, was he harder on the women than he was on the men? Oh, yeah. The women went. The men don't even know what the women went through because they're so separate. I know some. And then being with the women, I know most. So the women went through hell and hot water, all of them. I didn't even know what all of them went through. I didn't even know what Brianna had went through until after everything I had left. I'm like, dang, her, she got her too? I didn't know. That's why she was acting sick? That's why she's left? Oh, I didn't know. There's things I didn't know. And, you know, um, the women, what I do know, 
is that Efru is, is heavily abused. Efru gets punched like a man, you know? She gets full-blown, like, three-piece combos off camera, guys. And this is New Atlanta. This is all right when he's getting locked up, so don't worry. It was crazy at the time. You know what I mean? Um, the women had it bad. The men was getting abused. The only man I ever seen abused was Pice and Loyal from uh, Eligio directly. He's the only one I've ever seen him go up to them and slapping them multiple times, pushing them around, abusing them, like literally bullying them, especially while they were, while Pice was sick. And then like the next day, I have a video in, in this phone, into my iCloud, of Eligio masturbating um, to Pice. And he's saying, like, dang, you kind of look like a girl. And all the girls are around him, like, yeah, Pice, you kind of look like a girl, yeah. And this is the day right after he's sitting there abusing Pice, pushing him, slapping him, beating up on him while Pice is sick. Mm -hmm. Talking about, oh, you got nice feet, Pice. And he's sitting there masturbating. You're looking straight at, like, some craziest thing. And I got ice. Do you think that he ever violated Pice? No, I don't think so. I don't think he did anything with anybody, any guy, but I. From what I my conversations I've had with some of the women, it's something that he probably would have went towards. They they're sus at him. You know, he's always watching like tranny porn when while he's having sex with the women, he's watching porn of of that. When it's like you don't have to, but he wants to. So the women are convinced that man, so like you don't you didn't know he had a crush on you? So like, you didn't know he liked you. Why you think he kept saying he wanted a wife like you, so like like you're saying, he wish his wife was like you, so like, he loved you, he wish he was you, so like, that's what the women tell me now. That's what the girls who's there, that's what they tell me now. I'm like, dang, I never, I really ain't look at it like that. I just felt like the top G, the top soldier. Like, I really felt like I, I just put in work, I'm valuable. He would tell people, like, one day, everybody's children are going to look like Solar. Solar is a future human. This is what future humans will look like. And he'll say stuff like that. And then they're like, bro, you didn't think that was sus? The women are telling me, I'm like, I'm like, well, I did not notice. But I, I think that he would have definitely worked it towards that direction. I don't, I, yeah, I think it was in the agenda. I mean, it didn't happen. It didn't happen, I, but they always, not. hearing the guys starting to defend, when the guys start saying they would drink his cum, that's when it gets, that's when you start, you start getting weird. And it, but it never happened. So, because there was a video where I think it was Pice. Or no, it was Malia. And I think Pice was talking. And Malia said, she was like, you guys were like around, like it was like a curved couch you guys were sitting at. And Malia said, no wonder he doesn't have a problem drinking your cum. And that's what she said on the video. So are you saying none oh, of you guys ever I drunk? Think, the I, don't think, I don't think it ever happened. If it happened, I don't know about it. But I don't think it ever happened. I think what she was saying was at the time that was a topic. He was asked, he asked the guys one time, he said, hey, what if I put it in like a smoothie or something? And would you guys drink it just for the information? Would you guys do that? And, and so they're like, hell no, what the hell, hell no. Some of the guys were like, shoot, that's chief, man, that's chief. Man, the knowledge is the knowledge, man, shoot. Now, and I don't want to expose nobody. So I'm going to say who said what. But people had their opinions and, um, so did he ever no put it in a smoothie? I just said no. It never happened. Okay. I just told you that. But it was the fact that it was a topic does make me think like down the line, like who knows what else? Transsexuals are starting to be reintroduced into the tribe heavy. You know, they're starting to promote right. doing lives, requesting right. transsexuals to, to come to the group specifically. So it was going in that direction before it ended. Do you regret that? No. Regret what? That situation that you just come up. No, I'm a pretty open person. I'm pretty honest. I, I got head from a transsexual, if that's what you're referring to. I don't care. The thing is, the way I look at things is different. If you come to me and ask me, I'm somebody who believes in purpose. I don't care what your relationship is. I'm not turned on by men. That's not my thing. I mean, that was a struggle situation. However, I was a part of it. And the reasons why I did it were varied. There was many reasons from what it could look like on the internet from getting attention just there's a number of reasons so when it comes to relationships and it comes to straight bisexual i don't care my thing is are you in your purpose if you being in your purpose means that you end up single 
be single, but being your purpose. If you being purpose means you end up with two, three wives, that's your purpose, bro. But don't try to do something that's not for you. If your purpose is to be with this one woman or to be with, uh, with, with, with whatever it is, two guys, two girls, three, three cups, I don't care. As long as you're in your purpose, it's not for me to judge. That's not my job to judge how y'all get down. For me, I had to learn what I liked and I did experiment in my life. I'm a, I'm a human being. I, I have a Gemini and Mars. I experimented in life before, before the group existed too. That's just how it was. Now I know what I like. I like bad, like beautiful women. And I had, that's what I have an abundance of. But I'm saying, do you, do you regret it at all? Like, do you regret? No, like, I don't regret, I don't regret it because the same, the cat, the, the, with the cliche reason of is it took us where we are today. So I don't regret anything. I don't think like that, but did we have to, did I have, we didn't have to do none of that. I mean, come on, out of all things of regret, there's so much other worse things. I, I don't care about that as much. You know, I don't think about regretting that. That happened. Okay. And, and, and people are going to have their judgments. People are going to have their opinions. And I just explained why I don't believe I should have a judgment or an opinion on somebody else's relationship. My, my opinion, my judgment is on the value of that person's character and if or not they're in their purpose. Because there may be something I need to learn that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I believe in balance. I believe in that balance of nature. And I know that has to come in one way or another. But the universe is changing and is doing things in new ways that we've never seen before. So I'm not one to tell you what's right or what's wrong. I'm here to tap into source for me and to feel what's truth. I just want to live in truth. If that's truth for you and that's what's real, I'm not going to sit here ca calling you, taunting you and making fun of you because that's who you authentically are. I don't know that. I don't know that. And it's not for me to know that. So I let that go. So I have my, I have a large following of all kinds of people of all kinds of sexual orientations. And it's funny, the hashtag love wins is used by that, by those communities as well, but I really don't care. People are people and the knowledge is for everybody. If you can breathe and harness, harness Kundalini energy, you can reach a certain level of frequency where you're healthy to the people around you. That's all I care about. Okay. So moving on from that, because that was one of the highly, highly, highly DM'd commented things that they wanted to know about. I'm like sure. If you regretted it, like if you were- I ended up making an OnlyFans and everything. Like after, even after that, I ended up making like an OnlyFans. My OnlyFans was popping too. Like I really, I don't make a, I don't publicize that part of me, but there's a part of me that is naturally tapped into Tantra, which is where you really go deep into all of your senses for anything. But it's usually used with, you know, that, that type of, you know, what I'm talking about. So that seductive world, right? So in that area, where I'm, I don't know what words I can use or not, so I'm being careful. Mm -hmm. So in that in that area, I like to teach those those things. I like to teach women what the Kundalini energy is and how they're naturally tapped into it. They want to know how to work with their moon, how to moon, how to work with the wounds and the cycles. I like to teach them those things, so the right way. I like to teach men how to harness their Kundalini energy, how to master that energy. It's not just about holding it and harnessing it, but also about how we use it. So men, we're just, men and women are different. Men are built with more emotional intelligence. Men are built with more, what is known as, and this is a fact, it is a reptilian and a mammalian brain. Women naturally are in their feelings. They're naturally in their body and in their senses. Just more, they don't really care about what you're saying or what you're talking about because they're feeling what's going on now, majority of the time. Men are usually thinking. They don't have that same, um, the same expansions as the women does, they, they're a little bit different. So they think more with the neocortex, men get a little bit more creative with emotional intelligence. So men, you need to learn how to tap into your body. You need to learn how to breathe. You need to learn how to harness that. You gotta tighten that little area down there that, that we all think is funny, the perineum, we think it's hilarious. But you gotta tighten that energy and hold that and learn how to cycle breath and energy throughout your being. You have to learn how to do this. And women already do it. They naturally do it. They're built doing it. They're learning emotional intelligence, but that's coming at a higher rate for women because they have to be masculine anyway nowadays. So that's what I believe, and that's what I observe, and that's what I see, and that's one of the things that I teach. 
So when we get into that realm and that energy, it's a very taboo topic. And I love that people like to talk about it because if you take anything from this message is to take that type of energy a little more serious. It's very sacred. And you guys have seen even how my journey has been when that energy is abused or when that energy is attacked. It's very hurtful, it's very painful, it's very serious. And you can use this same energy to heal yourself and to heal your partner and the people around you. It's not just about that seductive side. It's about fulfilling, getting a fulfilling sense of life all the time, gratitude, higher frequencies, higher vibrations. There's a lot that comes with this and it's, and it's an alignment with sovereignty in all dimensions. If you don't feel these vibrations, these higher frequencies, or they're taboo to you, it's because there's dimensions you may not be aware about. You don't have knowledge of them to be free in them. So it's a cap at a certain point. It, it, I want people to be able to master their emotions and their reality so that nothing can manipulate them and control them, especially when our weakest points as humans, as our, our hearts. All right. So thank you for that. Now we're going to move forward to when you left. Right. So you left, you went mm. to Mexico and shortly thereafter, I think you came back and you met up with Janae. You and Janae started a relationship. So walk us through that. So I leave, I get, go to a spa, me and Janae talking on a low and um, go to Mexico. I'm with the guys. I went Musa and some of the guys and we're just, you know, we're living out in Mexico. We, we establishing ourselves there. It is a really good setup. Um, I ended up going back to the States at some point, getting with Janae. I had ran into a good amount of money and I bought my studio with it and a couple other things. Some old, some old friends of mine ended up uh, looking out for me in a very really major way because I helped them a long time in an even bigger way. And so I ran into a lot of money and moved Janae out with me. We were living in Mexico, had our own house, doing our own thing, bought our own furniture, new Nintendo Switch, new iPhones, new service, new this, new that, everything brand new. You know what I mean? We're doing great. And, you know, the relationship, I think, was awesome. I think the relationship was beautiful. And Janae's an amazing person. You know, she looked out for me when I left the group and she had my back all the way through and um you know she always just wanted to to love me and me to love her and just to have that fantasy relationship um I only only comment i have about our relationship publicly um because i want to protect the sacredness of that is i think that i wish she would have took more time to sit down and get to know me rather than continuously assuming that she knew me because that's where all our arguments started I didn't have to say nothing. I could let everything go, but I'm like, bro, I feel like a, a brick wall. Like I'm a ghost. Like you just married. I, I don't feel like I'm in the relationship. I don't feel like I'm here. I'm just a guy. I'm just a Ken doll. And I didn't like that. And I'm like, I have so much more value, you know? And I'm just like, get to know me. And like, I already know you. I already know what you're thinking. I don't know what you're doing. I already know what you're saying. No, I don't need to hear it because I already know. And that right there, bro, I couldn't, that right there, I couldn't do it. And, and, and just to leave that alone, because she's a great woman. I learned a lot of things from her. I learned a lot of different things from her. Um, I wasn't the, I could have been better with her too. So it's not all her why the relationship didn't work. But ultimately that was my understanding from hers. With Velvet, it was a little bit different because which was shortly after this. So after Janae leaves, you know, after being back and forth so many times, you know, after she leaves, I'm like, yo, you're leaving this time. I'm taking this as a breakup. Ain't no pause. Ain't no separation for a week. This is a breakup. If you leave, if you fly out the country and you leave this house in Mexico, we broke up. I'm not doing no break. You out the country. No, you just broke up with me. And so, so we had that establishment. She left. And when she left, um, she had lied to me the night before. She told me she was going to stay. We ended up having very, very good intercourse. And I know that's where our child Azuli came from. And she ended up not leaving. I mean, she, excuse me, she ended up leaving. She ended up, she lied to me. She told me she wasn't going to leave in the morning. I woke up and she's at the door with her bags and she's getting a taxi already. And I'm like, what's going on? I told you I'm leaving. I'm like, you told me you was going to stay. And she ended up leaving that night. I ended up getting with Velvet later on because we resonated 
through so many different levels. Purpose, uh, we aligned, we were both going through the same thing. We were both saying we're done with the relationships, we're working on ourselves. I had just revamped my whole business after Janae left. I turned up. When Janae left, I turned up. I cleaned the house like it was never cleaned before. I had my page revamped. I I found big men. I did so much work when Janae left me. I was so on point. I was making money. Mm -hmm. I was doing everything. And I was live every day with my group, with my class. This is when Soul Redemption started. And we was we was killing it. And, you know, um, Janae had, was with me at the beginning of Soul Redemption. When she left, I really turned up. I'm not about to take this as a loss. I end up going through this. I end up sp spending like a, a whole entire day at the beach. I'm like 4 a.m. at the beach. I come home. First video that comes on is Velvet. And she does a live where she's talking about how she's done with all these relationships, all this or that. She's working on herself, going through this, going through. And I'm like, yo, everything she was saying resonated with me so perfectly. But it was in a self-healing. It was in a higher frequency. I'm like, exactly. Bro, so she gets everything that I'm on at the higher degree. I want to be with her. You know, and we ended up connecting on their energy. We ended up wanting to be together. That's what that was. And it wasn't like I can... I came to her, she came to me. We just started talking and we both came to the understanding like, bro, we're perfect for each other. And we just agreed to be together and we're, we couldn't believe it. We're like, we're really doing this. Wow, we're really doing this. And this is so perfect that you can't believe it. This is how we're ta talking about it. She's sending me love songs. I'm sending her love songs back. It's beautiful. I end up getting with her. I end up flying out there to help her um, to get Aviana her passport so that all the kids can go to Mexico uh, and we can go back to my house in Mexico. So I, I leave my house in Mexico. I still have rent paid for a couple months. Paid the homie to watch my house and everything. I go to Ohio. I'm staying with her in Ohio at her house. And I'm seeing how it is in the hood or whatever. She, she, her house was like church. It felt like a chapel in the middle of the hood. It felt like like sanctuary. It felt like a little mini heaven. And she, her home was so beautiful and her energy and it was so great, you know. We, we cultivated our relationship there. Janae ended up texting us while we were there, already together, already having intercourse, already bonding, that she was pregnant. And so me and Velvet are like, oh. And I show Velvet immediately because I don't like to keep secrets. I don't know. I'd rather get in trouble. So I showed, like, oh, look what I just seen. She's pregnant. I'm happy about it because it's a good thing. But I'm like, I got to show this to Velvet. Ah, please don't freak out. Please don't ruin this. I show it to Velvet. Velvet says... That's beautiful. That's another you. That's that's a bigger family. That's beautiful. That's awesome. Janae, Janae always wanted that baby. Beautiful. This is great. And so me and her are like, dang, this is dope. I'm like, yo, I'm so glad you're mature. I'm giving her more profit prop, props now. I'm like, yo, like, thank you. Like, thank you for making this easy. Like, oh my God. Do you think and that so made her more inclined to want to have a baby by you by competing with Janae? That's something I don't want to answer because I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what she really thinking or what she's not thinking. I, I, my heart would like me to believe that everything was genuine. Our relationships was genuine. We really loved each other and connected. And, you know, we didn't communicate the best way we could have. And we could have worked on ourselves in certain areas rather than leaving each other many times. Mm -hmm. That's what I think happened. And we were just, we had to gain that maturity and um for both of us so i mean i always loved them that was never fake and i think one of the problems is that they think that i was fake or i was like a Leo love bombing them just wanting to manipulate the situation put them together to have power and i'm not like that I, this kid is big it's, it's not that for me man and um it's funny because i i actually didn't always po promote that they promoted it at different times for me janae was like I would be with you and Velvet if Velvet would just stop um, ignoring me or this and that. And then Velvet would be like, well, I, I'm open. I think we're a big family. Why don't we come together? Or when she were in Arizona, she's like, well, Janae, I'm, I think it's time for us to all come together. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. And and we all know now um, we're just saying that. So she's cool with it. Janae's throwing a fit. And Velvet's like, man, what happened, man? Like, I tried. And so they both tried at different times. And it's just it's What's been like... Right timing? One one's ready to be friendly, this one's not. This one's ready to be friendly, this one's not. This one's ready to be friendly, this one's not. And I'm just doing the best I can to be neutral, to just be there for everybody, be there for the best decision, 
I mean, and I'm oh, with the partner I'm with. Were you like leave, leading one or the other on at that point? No, not at all. Janae's pregnant now. She just left me. I'm bidding her good, good riddance. And mm -hmm. now she's pregnant. So she's back in the picture. I'm in another relationship. And me and Velvet, we can have a conversation. We get along very well. We can convert mm -hmm. like she, we, we're there. And so I, I really like, we're compatible. I'm compatible with Velvet, but with Janae, it's just was never that. I'm a communicator. So, so we can be compatible not, in other like, areas, like, but if you can't talk to me and we can't communicate. So did you I'm really like out. that? Like Janae like that? No, I love Janae. I love Janae a lot. It's just it hurt my feelings being in a relationship with her. It ended up being not good. Could we could we fix it? Could we behave better together and co parent one hundred percent? You know, could we have made the relationship work? I believe so. I, I just don't think that with where we were, or maybe even where we are, that we had the maturity to deal with each other, you know, realistically, especially from our setup in life. We just left the cult. We have, we have nothing. We have no money. We have no house. We have no jobs. We have very little support. We just talk shit to our parents for years. Like, most we got really is each other at a certain point in time. And... You know, what I mean, that was just the reality of it, but we operated as if that wasn't the case sometimes. And, you know, I think we took for granted. I think we took each other for granted, me and Janae. Great woman, great woman, amazing person. Um, I'm so glad they're the mothers of my children. I, I trust that my children are gonna be just as amazing as I believe they are with, under, the, under the protection of their mothers. And as soon as they can stop seeing me as a Legio, or fearing that I'm going to be a Legio, I will gain access to their lives again, because that's the only barrier that there is. They're afraid. They think I'm going to be like him. And that's just what it's always been. They think I don't love them. They think I was playing them. Now, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. Actually, I don't even know what they really, really think. Because when we're together, I know what's real. And that's where I live. So everything else, I speculate. And, mm. I, and I justify it in many ways, because I know what's real. And what's real is if Velvet was right here and Janae was right here, we would be cool. If all our babies were right here, we're sitting here in a circle, we would be good. And I know that. And we would be... I digress. I'm not going to go into that because it gets too sensitive. And... So, so right now, you don't have access to either one of, of the children? Is that what you're saying? They make it difficult. It's been difficult for different reasons at different times and different seasons. Right now, um, I believe that they're in different relationships. So they're now that's playing as a, as like an extra barrier. Like I've been trying to, I wanted to see my daughter and then I have to talk to Janae's some guy. I don't want to expose his name, but you know, now I have to do that just to see my, and I'm playing the part. I'm like, cool, whatever. Like, let me talk to my daughter. <laughs> like, whatever, like, cool. Like, so where is she? That's what I'm on. And they're just like, playing games with the text like like power and i'm like i'm not about to argue. i'm not about to argue with y'all i'm not about to fight with nobody i'm not gonna do what y'all i think you want me to do so mm -hmm. i just right now i'm playing that I, i'm leaving that alone it's a relation it's new relationships with these women with babies the new guys the guys so are sensitive both, the women so are sensitive them are in new relationships velvet is i don't know i don't know I, I i i was told velvet's with her ex i don't know however what i do know is that She's she will, she can move on, and she keeps saying that she wants to and all those different things, and that's fine. I have a new person, and my person to me is the most compatible, perfect person that ever came across for me. Like, it's like it all makes sense. Like it was all for something. So shout out to you because I know you may or may not be watching, but yeah. Okay, all right. So um, so are you still providing for them even though you're having a difficult time because that was a another thing that came up both of them said that you were not providing for the children yeah they that's bullshit excuse my french um i've done a lot and um they choose to never acknowledge it and the moments where like example janae requested 400 dollars for me and i said give me a day or two. And I didn't respond to her message for like a whole day. And it was New Year's or something. And she blocked me. She went on my live and she went in there and just 
said, I'm putting you on child support and blocked me. And that hurt my feelings a lot. I'm like, what? We was just good two seconds ago. Because mm-hmm. she, she needed, I didn't know what she needed the money for, what it was. So the very next day, I literally got that exact money sent to me in a cash app. And I'm trying to get it to her, but I'm blocked. So I'm trying to contact her and I'm blocked. And yeah, I could have just sent it to her. I could have done things like that. But I'm trying to get in touch with her. I'm trying to talk to her to feel like, yo, can we not, we need to communicate this. We can't keep doing this. And that's going to keep blocking me. We send you money and then you block me again. And then I, that's not healthy for me, you, or the kid. That's not cool. So we got past that hump. And that has been the only thing that I see coming in as an issue with me and Janae is like on demand support. I'm not always able to do that, even though I'm working really hard. I'm trying really hard, doing a lot that I can, you know, but our funds are all really separated. So everybody's spending more. Everybody has to work more. Everybody got to do more because we three different families now instead of one. So I am doing everything that I can to always support them. I do live below my means. I, they're I'm usually like right above a certain point just because I have certain things going. Uh, I, I'm planning for the future. And I think that, you know, I'm waiting. I have a good faith that Belvin and Janae are going to get right to the point to where I can give them these things. And we can have our, our children can really be abundant. As far as what's going on now, they don't need me for nothing. They block me for everything. If I request the help, they don't care. If I buy $1,000 list of stuff, they don't care. So I, I kind of like just limit what I do sometimes. So no, I don't support as much as I used to anymore and as I would like to, but it's really from being blocked. I, I just want to, I don't think it's right. I don't think certain things are being, I'm not being treated right at all. I'm definitely getting oh. the worst end of the stick in the situation because they think I'm a Leo and they think they're protecting my children from me. And it's absolutely nuts because they think I'm love bombing them and I'm a narcissist. And, and they're using all the psychological terms that they've been told or heard or seen in the book just to throw it on me and make it okay to keep my kids with me. I don't like it. Why, why would it both really women sick. Why would both women come to that conclusion? Like, what are you doing? Well, that Janae, you doing? That's not both women are on that conclusion because Janae's cool. My last message from Janae is, Solar, I'm so sorry. I don't want any, I never wanted any problems with you. I never wanted any issues with you. I never want any problems with you. I just want us to be good again. I just want us to be cool. And I'm like, cool. So me and Janae are cool. We're good on that level. It's just now there's a guy involved. So now that's weird. Me and Janae are good. Oh, okay. But what about Velvet. you and Velvet? Yeah. As you say, 11 11, as you say that. No, no, oh, man. Why, just, why do she, she, like she, you're going to be Nature Boy? We are alike. Me and Alihio are very much alike, you know, except he beat her. He used to beat her. Uh, and I think that I'm a really serious, disciplined guy. I think that she thinks that I might do that to her. Or what I do know is that. In periods and time, she thinks that I'm fake. Like uh, the sense that I'm like Alihio, I don't really love her. I would only use the child to manipulate her. I only want her for her views and the numbers online. I only care about her, and none of those are true. I just genuinely love her from the bottom of my heart. I believe I, I feel like I've flipped inside out multiple we times. We think how hard you go for Velvet, so I don't know how she could feel like. Man, I went through so many levels of turmoil trying to figure out if I loved her or if I was indeed obsessed with her. Trying to figure out what was the difference. It's like, no, I did love her. I'm being told, she's telling me that I never did. Anytime anything like that pops up, I say, hey, I want to be there for my family. I, hey, I'm here. No, you're not. You'll never be. I'm not. Let me not expose. Let me not say what she says because I want to keep it clean. But just, I'll put it in this nutshell is that I'm trying. I'm just getting rejected right now. But I'm not going to stop trying. And I'm not going to stop being the best me. I'm not going to stop building our assets and things for my children in in their names. You know, I'm not going to stop doing what I got to do for the family over here because of what's going on over there. I'm just going to wait for the right time, whether they need me, whether they choose to be around, whether they feel safe, whether they want to try, whether whatever it is, whether it's years, months, weeks, days, tomorrow, I don't care. I want to be ready at that point at the highest level. What's that, bro? They know who you is? Go ahead. Oh, man, oh, man. Hold up, Nate. Can I put it on this plate? Man, my man, Nate. The oh, great. that's a big old hamburger. The chef. You know it's a vegan one. Look at that. Oh, man. And the, the potato. 
Good to you. Oh, he's serving you, child. That's nice. That's a nice friend right there. Bro, do you think that's how we go? Play, bro. That's how we scroll, man. Y'all good down there? You think? God is good. God is good. Gratitude. That was nice. That's, what, that's like a real friend. He see you online. You doing an interview. He bring like, let me bring my my friend some food. Uh, you know, and, you got you know, school, like that. It, it, they don't need to be no cameras. There don't be nothing going on. You just do that anyway. He cooking. That's he going right. to make sure everybody eat. Anyway, that man has a lot of friends in good standing for a reason. There's a reason why I'm around certain people. They think, and that's another thing. Another thing I hear all the time is they think I'm around a bunch of crazy people. Okay. All right. So if my phone died, don't get mad at me. No, but I'm gonna get mad at you. Plug it up right like now. Three hours. It's been like three hours, man. Plug up the phone. How long are you trying to keep me on here? Uh for like uh 15 more minutes. 15 more minutes. <laughs> 15 more minutes. Or 20 more minutes to keep make it a full um three hours. Um uh, I'm about to just move around. So I gotta come over here. Hold on. I look like Nigerian or something with this haircut. <laughs> ah, two percent caught it. That's on video, so it probably would have went out sooner. <laughs> Somebody it, said, it, "Wait, wait, wait!" Somebody said, "Neek all in these folks' life, but don't know, want nobody to say her name." It's not about me. It. If if you actually knew me and we had history and you had a reason to bring my name up or speak about an interaction that we had in real life, then yeah, it will make sense that you bringing up my name. But if I never met you, I don't talk about you, I don't speak about you, I don't do commentary on you, I don't communicate with people that know you, then it becomes weird that she's bringing my name up because she started dating somebody that knows me. Okay? But that, but then, so she started trying to add me to the story that I had nothing to do with. I didn't introduce you to that person. I didn't link you up with that person. I don't talk to you. I don't even talk to them. So why you keep trying to add me to the story? That's the problem that I have. Uh, with so you like, leave me alone. Le leave me out of it. I didn't even, int I didn't introduce you to them. I, hear you. I, I hear didn't you. meet you through them. I, I don't put in a personal through. request. I don't like, so why you keep trying to add me to the story? That's my problem. Well, well, neat, neat, neat. And, and you know what? Yeah, and I'm I'm glad you communicated that because if that is the issue, then there's probably some answer to it. I don't need to solve it. You don't need to solve it. We don't need yeah, to she a world-renowned singer. Let, it, let it be what it is. But the the, the fact the fact that you can acknowledge that that is what the problem is, I don't think that the solution is really that hard. I just don't know if you guys are going to get to it, but it's okay. Don't give it that much more energy. I'm not. So you, know, let's you got a lot. You got you got a beautiful platform. I loved your intro. And I know you in person. And if somebody was saying these things about you, Neek's crazy. Why do you deal with her? You see what's on her page? You see what she's talking about? I'm like, hold on, bro. Hold on. <clears throat> that woman is doing what she needs to do for herself in her life, and she's doing it well. Thank you. I see it. And people oh, don't have nearly the setup that you have with your infrastructure. I see how you do your thing. You got your thing set up right. I don't even got my stuff set up like you. I did mine different, but... Mm -hmm. I would vouch for you, whether whether they knew you or not, or it mattered or not. I would vouch for you. It's the same thing. That's the same thing I feel for her. So I don't know what I don't know. You know, someone came to me accusing you of this and that. I I wouldn't be able to tell them if they're lying or not. I'll be like, damn. Well, I know her to be a good person. So we don't have to talk about them. But at least this, this issue ain't that bad. Okay. So let's move don't on. Hurt I, each other. I don't want to talk about, like, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. No, no. Yeah, All right, let's talk about, talk about some more bullshit in my life. Just bring up some shit about me. The question that people want to know. The, they they want to know did y'all ever hook up? That's what they wanted me to ask. Me and Jag, no, never. That's auntie. Yeah. That's like that's literally like my auntie Jag. That's like my auntie Nietzsche. It's like my auntie Michelle. It's like all my aunties. And we act like that too. We look out for each other. Uh, we make sure eat everybody good. We make sure everybody eating stuff like that. We just really family vibes. Okay, so yeah, we be that's chilling. We really be. You be chilling, working. We, me and Jag, we work. So everywhere me and Jag going, we, me and her, we're working. We're over there putting in work on whatever it is. Like we pushing envelopes. That's just how we are. Okay. So okay. So I have more questions, but I feel like um, 
maybe we should just let the audience ask the rest of the questions. Or what do you think? Or are you scared of them asking questions? No, no. As long as we don't talk about your business no more. Just keep, keep it on me. You can ask me whatever you want to ask. You got me for a couple more minutes. Any, How much more any, I got any, I got things to do. It's, it's late and we're way past my schedule. Okay, so you want to talk to them for 10 minutes? I get I get up at 5 a.m. Well, I shoot to get up at 5 a.m. every day. So I'm, I go to sleep. I start my wind down at 7 and go to sleep at 10. So my hour and a half past that. So I got to stick to my commitments to myself. This has been great, though. I definitely... You know, you don't want to take questions one. from the audience, is what you're saying? No, you could do that real quick. Let's do it quick. We okay. just gotta wrap it up because commitments. Okay, thank you for your time. All right, mm -hmm. so y'all gotta click the link, come in real quick because you know Solar is trying to make his exit because we done held him hostage for three hours. Yeah, it's bedtime, guys. Um, so y'all gotta, in order for y'all to either get the question, y'all gotta either super chat the question or click the link. Okay, and we got 10 minutes. Because y'all putting crazy. Done. We ain't going to do everybody, I'm so we can do some. Yeah, just a couple. Somebody said this interview was dope. Thank you. I appreciate it. This was appreciate good. It. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This was, uh, I hope you wasn't know. offended by none of the questions, but some of the stuff I had to ask for the audience. You know what I'm saying? Meek, Meek, you've been very respectful. You could have asked all kinds of things, and even the things that were taboo, you asked in a nice way. I just want to let you know I was comfortable with it, but you're good. I enjoyed my time with you. You, you special person. I'm a real guy. I'm a real dude. Just ask me stuff. I'm always gonna tell you the truth. All right, Sammy. Thank you for that. Also, Solar, you cute. You you cool too. Hey, Solar. Hey, um, up, I wanna know what. Don't please, please, sir. Um, why would you in Mexico me? summoning demons? Excuse me. Janae said. Before your question, what did you just say? Because you telling us, you telling me if I if it's worth my time. Go ahead. No, um, I don't remember. Janae said oh, y'all yeah. was in Mexico summoning demons. Can you explain, elaborate? And then you also said you taught Nature Boy demonology. Can you share with the audience what you meant? Yeah, I can't explain it. So, um, basically, no one summoned the demons. That's not how it works, and that's not what the Goetia is about. So to understand your question, if you really want to understand the answer for that, you would have to know what the Goetia is. You'd have to know the story of King Solomon. That's what it was predicated upon. And that is what opened that door um, for Eligio to start kind of abusing it. He actually got it from a friend. He heard it on a live. They mentioned it to him. And why not? Hey, why not? You need, not, you need only truth. Shout out to why not. He's actually the one who had mentioned it to him. He said the name. And, and, and we were in a live or something, and I had researched it. Uh, Leo asked me to research it. I researched it, and I sent him a picture of what it was that they were talking about in the live. And it was a de it was one of the demons from the Goetia. And from that on, I know about that knowledge. It's, it's, Mason it's Masonic things. I know about that knowledge and what those things mean, whereas he doesn't. And so what he did with it was he started to personify and try to embody the characters of these entities listed in the Lesser Key, Solomon Key, uh, Goetia. So it is a book of demons. There is also a book of angels as well that match each of them. And the story of King Solomon is the balancing and a mastery of all of them. So Eligio didn't understand none of that story. He didn't understand what it was. He just heard bits and pieces, thought that they were cool and decided to dabble and play with the demonic energy and got stuck in it. And I do think that it ended up playing him in a certain way. If you want to think spiritually, psychologically, he went to a type of a form of hysteria and mania from it. So no, I definitely played with the wrong types of things and I am very knowledgeable about them. Um, I don't know if you know what this is, but I'm on some other stuff. I'm on some higher level mastery things. So. That's that's the lower levels, the Goetia, the demons. That's actually very easy to master. He got stuck there and got lost in it through ignorance. Somebody super chatted and said, is it true that he broke Eli's tooth? If so, why? No, it's not true. But I'm not going to go into that question deeper because it involves a serious scenario with Velvet. Oh, they talking about her baby? Is that who they're talking about? They always, they always ask. Uh, really? I always get the same answer. No, I didn't do it. She did that to herself on accident, but I get blamed for it. But continue. Oh, okay. 
All right. Um, Tierra Carson. Hello. Hi, so okay. How are you? I'm good. <clears throat> nice. Thank you for coming up. Um, and then I, the people on camera will get like priority, but go ahead. But we, we got to, you know, he said we on the time limit, but go ahead. Okay. Um, I have one question for you. Um, okay. So what made you Hey, wait, you have to turn it off in the back, your background. You got to turn it off. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what that is. I got to turn it down. Like turn it. Yeah. Turn it down all the way. You while like you talk on here. Yeah. Okay. I did. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. I have one question. What made what made you um switch? Not I don't want to say switch up because I don't want to disrespect you, but um what made you switch up like go against um nature boy? I, I, I think I seen you and true at first. You guys were like uh, uh, uh going for him and saying it was false. And I didn't get I, I missed the part gotcha. where you, you guys like so decided well, to go against it. So I was never in the room neither was true none of us were so we don't know if he did or didn't do what he did but from the stance and from the history Janae's lying we don't believe her she's gonna mm -hmm. get online she's gonna say whatever she's gonna blame her problems on everyone else and she's gonna accuse us of stuff and you know we're like all right he didn't do that he didn't need to do it. he don't need to rape her why would he do that right and so we're thinking that from the inside. We're still thinking he's a great guy. I, mind you, this is me prior to me not knowing all the lies and everything. Prior to me not, I'm still in the group. You know, there's still a lot of things I don't know even at this time about his character. And the switch happened where I spoke with Janae and I heard Janae's side of the story. So when I left, I left for completely different reasons. I left because he was disrespecting me and my value. And I felt like it was time for me to go somewhere where I'd be valuable. So I left. Janae helped me when I left. She got me, she paid for the spa, Jeju, Jeju Spa. And I was able to stay there all night, just <laughs> relaxing in crystal domes and stuff. And I ended up meeting with her. And I ended up saying, all right, so what happened? Tell me what happened. And the first time I ever asked her that, right after all this stuff, before any tea, before any of this or that, like I heard any of that, she yeah. told me exactly what happened from her mouth, and I have not heard that story switch. And so it was the same story she told the T. The same story, and Janae is really nice. You guys got to understand that she doesn't want to do to have to lock somebody up or incriminate somebody, or like she doesn't know like she doesn't. She's a really good good girl. She'll let people get away with that, you know. And that's just you know the people were just like not today, bro. This is it's can end right now and she ended up taking that leap and then that's where we are today so i'm on the other side because after i left the group as well i and i heard janae's side of the story i started to learn more about alihio even more and it really started to open my eyes to all of the things that you never heard of, you ever heard of rose colored glasses no it's like it's a term that's used for to say like you're looking at somebody with rose colored glasses you're not seeing their flaws. You're only seeing the good things. You're only seeing the best things about them. They're looking really good to you. But if you took those off, the reality is, bro, they snaking you. They do you dirty in all kinds of ways. You did not know. And that was what it was. So I have no trust for him. I have no, there's no more honor for him. What he's done to my daughter, you know, what he's done to these other people. When my friend Amar died, I know why Amar died. It's under this guy's orders and him acting like Alihio. You know, when he was looking for a father figure. So my friend's gone. My daughter is gone because of the situation. My my partners, my baby mothers are afraid that I'm going to beat them like Alihio beat them. They're afraid that I don't love them and I'm just trying to manipulate their minds and energies for numbers. And I'm sitting here fighting day after day to show and prove my love. And all they're doing is saying different things. Either I'm broke or I'm a narcissist or I'm a, a verbal, I'm abusive, very good, verbally abusive. Anything that they would say is just, it's like, come on, that's not it. Yeah, that's why. I, 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 I could I, tell you why we broke up each and every one of the relationships, but I'm not, I'm not trying to go into that. The reason why we broke up is nothing. It's really petty. It's always really small. And it just goes so big to where when it's over, we're going to throw everything and make everything as horrible as possible. And I was just the worst person ever when I have vi video evidence I would go live with these women all the time. We have the most beautiful lives. So I digress.
All right, before you ask your next question, hold on. Mm -hmm. um, this came up a lot in my last video and somebody just super chatted it. So I don't um, believe it. You don't believe what? Uh, I think it is my child. I think it's my son. Oh, okay. So you don't believe the people who think that she's not showing the baby. Have you seen the baby? Um, no, but somebody from the inside did send me all of his information. So I was able to do his chart. I know his name. I know things about him. Um, I'm not sharing it because she's not sharing it. So I'm respecting the privacy that she's choosing to have. However, I luckily, thank you, randoms. Thank you, you, you know who you are. Did she send you a picture of the baby? I feel good. No, I've never seen him, not once. Okay. I only know his name, but through his name and and how she talks about him, I know that's my son on top of it, she, especially because of the name. The name screams, I love you, Solar. And so I heard that name and I'm like, yo, all right, so there's some realness still here. Are you going to ever take her to court so that you can see your baby? I probably would never do that. I'd rather just become a millionaire and just create situations for them to be comfortable in. So in the meantime, like the, the child needs both parents. So they need you, they I need agree. her. So in the meantime, if she's not going to allow you to see the baby, like you are just going to wait and not be there. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to take them to court right now. They don't need that. They don't want that right now. They need a, they're going through something else. Even if I was to do that, it doesn't mean that they're going to emotionally just mature instantly like that. It doesn't mean that. And so for me, it's like they got to go through whatever they got to go through anyway. They still got to get their lives together for themselves anyway. We just left a group. We have no foundation, you know, to where I'm, I'm in the same position to where I'm fighting to be there for them, but I, they just won't let me. So I'm forced to deal with what I got, and I'm cool with that because I'm overly abundant over here, like every day. I'm literally overly abundant. So it's like, it frustrates me to be cut out when I match all the requirements of what a woman would look for in a, in a baby father, or at least a trying baby father. I'm like the perfect, and I'm just not allowed. And it's because they, the, the now all that's left is they think I'm going to be like a Leo. That's all that's left. Okay. She it, 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 it rubs me the wrong way sometimes, but I'll wait. There's nothing else to do. Okay, There's go nothing ahead. else to do but for me to okay, work on so myself I, I, and keep make a, setting I, up for when they're ready. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to set up for when they're ready because I believe that the day will come. I don't think they're I don't think they're gonna keep my kids from me forever. I don't think they could if they tried. I just had a um something I want to say because I'm I'm almost I'm almost 40 and I've been a part of like the conscious community for a long time. Like Dr. Sabies and even Dr. Malachi Yorks, I've, I've, right. I've, you know, and stuff like that. So the thing about this case that, like, this, I have an unpopular opinion. Um, we, some of us feel like it's op it opened up the door for people to go to press. Like, I see that he's not the greatest person, but I don't feel like they actually proved that he raped her. And it's right, say say our word in her. Go ahead. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll just tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now, you can share your opinion as Tierra Carson. Mm -hmm. Solar does not care because oh. you're talking about a man who killed his daughter. I don't care. Oh. Go ahead. He, he went on trial. For, he got caught for what he got caught for. He went right. on trial for what he got, went on trial for. And I mean, that's not even nearly enough. If he was on trial for everything that he's done, oh, Lord. And I mean, of course, you could say that for everyone. But I mean, if you think about it, it was just carbonation in that group. Nah, bro. It is, it's not even a, a that's a smidgen. He no, got I, caught. I understand that he, he got caught. He got away with everything else and he got caught yeah. for something. That's what this no. is. I don't care if he, if it, I don't even care if it was a right or wrong court case. It was divine because his ass needed to be where he at. Okay. And, okay. and it's actually, if you want extra sauce, if you don't want to feel bad, it's actually completely in alignment with his, his astrology. This is a part of his path. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, I, I understand that. I just want to just throw that out there because I, I do feel like the court system have has the duty to prove. I've heard I've heard people saying that in different variations, but I've heard you know, that for almost every someone, court case that somebody was connected to perse persecuting others. Everybody others. feels like that. That's real. You you may not be wrong. Mm -hmm. The system's but, crazy, and that's why I look at this as like, well, he got caught for this. Like it is what it is. Yeah, I could care less at this point. I yeah. really don't care because he should if it's not this, it's something else. It's something that he got so much things to answer for that he's getting away with 
and I don't take it as my job and my duty to expose him. So all these videos and all these archives and things I have that would just put right. him underneath the uh, the planet, underneath hell. The thing is, I don't put it out because it's not my job. And what he knows what he did, and he gonna have to one you day. Have videos hey, that you know who I am? Him. You know what I've done? I got crazy stuff with this guy, but it, 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 it was the iCloud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shout out to iCloud. So. Yeah, even when I switched through phones, it would pop back up, and I'd be like, "Oh crap!" Like that's still there. So it is what it is. But I'm not. I think about putting it out, and I think about holding on to it sometimes. And I did delete it many times. The thing is, it's not my job. Right. That's well, his you, job. Did you ever, um, 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 Dr. Umar Johnson? Like you, you see that lady that walked up to him when he was having a lecture. She said, "Oh, I knew you last night." It's like I don't know you, lady. I mean, we don't want it to be easy for other. Um, like influencers of our community, it's a wake up call. But but the influencers have been going through this of uh, uh, not in the spiritual community, but in many other communities. My dad went through this in high school. My dad was accused of this stuff in high school in his time, when he was on the news for for basketball. He had a to let everything go because some girl accused a group of guys at a party for raping her, and he just happened to have been at the party. So you so now he was a part of the mix, and then he had a. Yeah, my dad. My dad had to go through a lot of things that ruined his life, and similar. Right. This is the system you're talking about. You, you're not talking about the wrong <laughs> system. All right, thank you, you Tiara. Know. Have a good night. Goodbye. All right, bye bye. Thank um, you, oh, let's see, Cree. She was cool. Yes, thank you. Hi, Solar. Hi, Nick. Hey, What's how up, you doing? Oh, I'm good. So, my question, Solar. I have two. My first question is: When he started smoking and drinking. Y'all didn't say nothing about that because that was like one of the things y'all really stood up against. Like y'all wanted to reach your higher self. And I think smoking and drinking really brings you to your lower self. So that's your personal opinion. And really? Well, you just said it. You personally think that it brings you to your lower self. But the reality is it's mastery of all energies. You're mm -hmm. not an ascended master of someone who can be at a higher at a high frequency, but have an understanding and the ability to go to the low, vice versa, be at a low frequency, but being able to go to a high one at will, not needing the factors to be able to do it, but only themselves to be able to shift their frequency. Mastery is the point here. So smoking and drinking, they're mediums and they can be medicines as well as they can be toxins. Anything that is overly abused or used for the wrong reason or without a sacred attention can be looked at as a poison. Whereas um, if you know why you're doing certain things or certain things are sacred in certain ways, like tobacco, for example, mm. uh, not with all the chemicals and stuff, indigenous people would have used that to set intentions and to honor the white bull and using every part of its body to bring the energy of abundance to the collective. So for these examples, uh, no, we're not doing that. Neek, doing too much. Who is that? Oh, you know him? I just got yeah. Oh, so we. I didn't, I didn't know that you know him. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. That's a oh. former troll. No, he's became. He used to. He was in carbonation before. Oh wow! But he began trolling me, so I'd, I'd rather um, he contact me personally before we get on the live together. Oh okay, I don't know. I don't keep know. It, keep it manly. Yeah, he literally just said so that. Don't take no shade to that, bro. There. I seen you. I always show you love. I always have shown you love. I always will. You and your family. But you've you've done things online uh, against me, and I don't know about about it. I haven't talked to you since. So if, until we talk about it offline, I would I don't want to do this. On, I don't want to do anything like that online. I don't think this no. is today. Who is this? Oh, I want to ask two more questions. Okay, hold on, Creed. Who is this? And, and, and again, 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 Neek, Neek, no. again, you're doing too much. I'm going to get into believing. You just keep no, pulling people up here like her. that. I'm like, I don't. Yeah, I don't, but I don't know why you're pulling people up here. I'm still talking to Cree. If anything, it would be one on one. So Cree's the last one because we're not doing no mess, messy, messy. Everybody has my phone number. Everybody can contact me. Um, but I don't think that's really her. That's the only reason why I pulled it up because that's yeah, they oh, they trolling. Yeah, okay. Test, test her in the studio. Test yeah. her in the studio. You don't got to pull her up. That's not her, Solar. I know, Calm but still, I'm, I'm telling you, you could test it in the studio, but I'm just telling you, you're doing too much. It's my sign to go. But okay. Cree, I'm so, trying to answer your well, question. If, you, if you're ready yeah. to go, so wait, 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 Cree. If if you're ready to go, Solar, we can let you go because I don't want to hold you up. I knew that was not Janae, and I pulled it up because I was asking who was trolling. But if you, if we have extended your time here, 
We couldn't mm-hmm. let you go because now. Yeah, because it, because there's I don't a know before, who that before boy her. Is. Oh, slow down. It's all right. Damn. Because right, okay. right be, it's, where it's coming from is before that. The guy I do. I know don't know him. him but okay, I don't. All right, know that's him. fine. That's that's and that is why I'm saying I'd like to do this one on one. It's too much. Four people jumping in panels. Like no, you know what I mean. Okay. It's, it it can get messy. So whether it was or not her, there was a chance. And so that's my point. So I don't want to be messy. So I'm just saying I want to answer Creed right now. I'm trying to answer them. Okay. Can I just ask both of my questions at the same time and just let them finish? Because Solar right. won't fight, but go ahead. Okay. My first question is, do you think <laughs> that the way your baby mamas are acting is a trauma response? And two, do you consider yourself deprogrammed? If not, what are you doing to deprogram yourself? Um, yes. Yeah, so number one, I do think that there are traumas. I think that we all have traumas. Yes. Especially from mm-hmm. that situation. Like even for me, one, I would carry that. I'll, I'll make an example of to show how real it is is things with my daughter, you know, when it comes to trusting another woman, you know, uh, with my heart, things like that. Now I'm fighting to not close off my heart space. So I stay really fun and loving and happy and open because I don't want to become grudgy and cringy because I've been hurt. or I feel like I've been done wrong. I've just taken it as lessons of letting it go. So that's how, that's the issue, but that's also how you can get through it. So you got to learn how to, like I said, master your energies. When If you ever get triggered or get pulled into something that traumatized you, you mm-hmm. know, we didn't ask for everything that we went through, but we went through it. You got to learn how to get out of it. And I think that that's what it's about healing is that when you know, like, okay, I could be projecting my trauma onto this person right now. Let me take these steps. Let me look at these things. Let me go through this checklist for myself. Let me go through and And then I think that would be healthy. But I think, Right now, with the way they, they're talking about me and treating me, they just see a Leo. What mm-hmm. I talk about is triggering knowledge of self. Um, I don't want to let certain things go as far as like the mission. My journey looks a lot like his. And I, I get it. You know, I get it. It's looking mm-hmm. a lot like a Leo. Yeah, you know, I get it too. That's why I was like, I feel but like you should just understand. Give them some space for a minute, I guess. Amen. Because I think you need it too. I think all y'all need it. Right. So, so in my journey, do I consider myself deprogrammed? Yes. And I can say this because I feel like no one is deprogrammed until you can comfortably identify your purpose. So a lot of people out here, they may not have been programmed by carbonation or a cult. However, they don't know their purpose still. And they're using mm-hmm. their energy day in, day out in a monotonous, psych- cyclic way that, you know, they're going to have to break out of one day to hit their higher levels of value for their personal selves and value and purpose. So I would say that once you can identify that, lock into that every day and dedicate your energy to something like that every day, I think everybody, nobody deprogrammed enough. Mm. You know, a lot of people were programmed to be who they are even now. And they think how we think, you know, I believe that it's all love at the end of the day, whether it's Jag and Neek, whether it's Janae and, and Velvet, whether it's me and Alihio. It's all love at the end of the day, and people was just hurt along the way. All right. Thank you, Creed. That's what's up. No problem. Bye. Good night. All right. Peace. Thank you, Creed. Well, yeah, all that's right. it. We're going to call it on that one so we don't get no more hiccups. Okay. But, Tanel is um, going to be nice, though. Can we let Tanel up? Yeah, yeah. Hi. Okay. Do you prefer to be called Courtney, or do you prefer Solar? Is that – I came in on the tail end, so whatever my, my is your preference. preference. My preference is solar, okay. but um, that funny story is they mean the same thing. Yeah, solar uh, Amore okay. is the same thing as Courtney. I didn't know that. Courtney means love, or it actually mm-hmm. means God's love. And okay. I didn't know that until like a couple of days ago. And solar Amore is literally meaning like the, the, the love of God. That's literally mm. the, the love of God. God's love from the most high. That's what solar Amore okay. means. So I love either. that. Okay. I like Solar, though. I do. Okay. Well, then, Solar, it is. And it's a pleasure to meet you. And um, really quickly, I know it's late and you want to go. My audio was going a little out. So I feel like the previous caller asked a, somewhat. I, I don't know exactly. But I don't know. Have you done any work with uh, post cults? I, I know you said deprogramming and you're always open to more. Um, the reason I ask specifically, you talked about the mothers of your children sort of relating to you in a way that has to do with not who you are, but maybe psychological terms that they've 
um, had access to now in, in their growth and healing post Eligio. So yes, yes. Um, do you think, even if you've already done some of that work, do you think continuing in that work might give you some language, give you a common ground to be able I to understand? I think it's funny that that work, it never stops. And right. I think that people think stops. that that work stops. And No, I don't. It, it, that's, what I, that's what I'm trying ongoing. to get people to understand is that it's not something you say, well, I went to therapy once or twice. It's not a thing. It's you learn how to deal with yourself. I you learn that. how to communicate how you're really feeling. Everything mm -hmm. I do is predicated upon raising personal value. So that also involves being authentic with yourself first and mm -hmm. then being able to connect to other people from that space. Otherwise, mm -hmm. everything becomes a game or, or some type of power play or ulterior motive. Whereas if you can be honest with yourself and communicate that for what it is, you can deal with whatever response you get without needing it to be something that will coddle whatever um, uh, void you may have. So mm -hmm. that's how I look at it. And, you know, yes, I've had uh, professional conversations with professionals and whatnot. They let me know, but you, you got it. Just keep going. Just don't stop. Sounds like what you're doing is going to keep, keep you good. I have a lot of self love and healing modalities that I practice daily, you know, that I promote. It's, go ahead. I hear you want to talk. I do because I want to ask, do you think, have you met your, the mothers of your children now where they are in terms of when we talk about authentically communicating with someone, mm -hmm. especially when you have a, a history and you have a history that was in such a toxic environment, the people that yeah. they may have been just as the person that you might very well be, might not be the same. And, and if you're allowing them the same grace that you I'm sure have to extend to yourself to keep going on this journey, then they must have come a little bit further than when y'all was dealing. So do you feel like you know them as they are now? I believe Janae and are communicating with them as they are now. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Janae, we've been able to communicate. The irony mm -hmm. is she's one who I have communication issues with, but she's the one who I get to communicate with the most. So it's really cool because we've made it very clear where our hearts are, and what, what we got going on. So as situations change and emotions can come in and out, we both understand what we're, what our priorities are. And so mm -hmm. that always lets me and Janae come back to a neutral space to where I don't, I'm not worried if one day she's moody or if I may have said maybe a, a, a text or a, with a word I could have did without. One mm -hmm. thing I know is that we are always able to come back to that neutral space. So I love that about Janae. Me and Janae have had that. Velvet and I, um, I've had the opportunity to communicate with her, and it is um, every what I say doesn't matter is is complete. I don't even know if it was even read, um, and then what I'm given is just, you know, a, basically what she's thinking, what she feels, and it's it's very clear to me that she thinks that I'm a Leo. She thinks I don't love her. She thinks I'm playing her, and I can continue to play with her in her life, and I need to leave mm -hmm. her alone and stop trolling her and attacking her, and I'm not doing any of that. So I, I'm doing what I can respectfully to be with my children or to show like, hey, I'm still here. Hey, you're not you're not in this alone. I'm still here. You, you don't have to say you're alone. You don't have to say uh, your, your child's abandoned. He's not. I'm right here. I'm still here and I don't force it. May I ask to that end, do you think um, uh, and I know a lot of Good times question. child support is deemed as something, oh, she put me on child support or oh, um, sometimes it seems as though it's, it's judged as something that's weaponized when gen genuinely it, it should be for the child. And it seems like you genuinely have your children's interest at heart. Do you think um, without any regulation or stipulation, do you think if you establish a sort of schedule regularly, even if you reached out and said, you know, you might not want to hear my voice every day, but I need you to know that this check is going to hit your Venmo or your cash app or your blah, blah, blah every month because or every week, because this is what I want to do for my children. And this is what I'm standing in my stead well, yeah. and saying this is what i'm doing you think that would help some so initially at first i just knew that i was going to pay them more than what child support was going to pay them every month and so i went with that mm -hmm. and i mm -hmm. did that and mm -hmm. now it's at the point to where the only incentive i have to doing child support is guaranteed that i get to see my children but what that would do to the relationship psychologically i feel is actually more damaging because i don't feel like they're so far gone where it's the impossibility 
And maybe I may be too optimistic. I don't think so. I would definitely pay child support. That is easy. If that that's the tiniest price to pay to have my daughter in my life. I've thought about that a million times. I made so many jokes about that. Like, bro, I'm I can't believe I'm about to put I'm about to put myself on child support. Just like it's di- I make jokes about it. Because but yeah, like, you should. I mean, any man should because compared it's to for what the child. I'm yeah. actually trying to do and what I actually have been able to provide. Now it has been crazy how like how my life has been. I've fluctuated. My finances have fluctuated. I have not always been able to provide them with thousands a month. I haven't always been mm-hmm. able to do that. You know, sometimes it's been a couple hundred a month. Sometimes it was nothing a month. I've had that mm-hmm. month already. You know, it doesn't feel good, but I would, you know what I, mean? I would offer I had, at least in those times I had communication mm-hmm. though, and we were still able mm-hmm. to talk and it was understood, you know, things like that. So I'm, I me, mean, I don't want to do it just because I think that it's going to be okay. And we're going to be able to work it out as adults. I do believe that. Um, if it, if I ever get notion that I need to do this or if it's too long or something like that, no, I'm definitely going to have to do something. Janae's responsible. I think I can, we can do things with Azuli. What's going on with Velvet? I want to let Velvet make her first debut towards me. I want to give her a chance to at least one time make a decision different than what she's been making now. That's what Janae did. Janae needed time. Mm-hmm. I gave Janae like four months. Four, day, month four, she said, you know what? This ain't right. Forget all that other stuff. Here's your daughter. You you need to see your daughter. She needs you in your life, in her life. You got y'all, y'all are clones. And then from there, it's been all good because all we had to do was break the stigma of the fear of what could be, and actually connect and be like, yo, it's actually all good. And now I'm over there. Now I'm in her house with her and her mom. This evil, crazy, narcissistic magic guy is in the house now with you and your mom and his daughter. And it's none of that. It's like, dang, what have we been doing this whole time? So me and Janae, we're good. Me and Janae, the family over there, I'm, I really love that side of her family. That Jamaican side, I love them. That's family to me. I love them. And when it comes I'm to- I have to Velvet, make it so. I'm not saying I'm on your team so loud, but no, mm, no, okay, okay. Well, no, 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 no. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to ask you this one thing, though, and I'm going to just say this, because this is one of the things about cults that I find you so insidious. Excited. Go ahead. Well, I, I do want to just ask you, um, there's an element of cults that make them so attractive because usually the leaders are charismatic. They have an element. They pick from things. They say some things that sound true and resonate with people who often find that the system that they're living in is not offering what they need. They see that there's something else. There's something outside of what people are telling them needs to be. It sounds and like a business. Well, the thing is, is that MLMs kind of work in that same way. They tell people what they want to hear. They love bombs. This is all I'm asking. You have, I feel, I don't know you from what you've presented. You have a very strong sense of wanting to do the most with your life, offer the most to the time that you have on this earth. And oftentimes cults take find people who have that kernel and they bastardize that, excuse my language, but they pervert that in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Allowing that light to have um, matriculated under Nature Boy, to have uh, been in that presence. Um, are you consistently, because we all have to do those self checks. And I know sometimes we start off in one way, so we keep our minds in the place of I always had good intentions. I never intended anything bad. So sometimes when we're doing those self checks, um, basically, long story short, where are you? Got, like, how do you feel a, in terms of the thing? I got you. I got you. I got a cheat okay. code. You know what it's called? What? I got a girl. She ain't letting me get away with nothing. She's calling me on everything. And guess what? I love it. And I do it for myself already anyway. I wouldn't even be able to keep a high value relationship that I want unless I'm able to do these things. I have too much to lose. I have children. I don't, I, I'm so far beyond like what what we were doing at Carbonation, for example, views, money, numbers. I don't care. I really don't care. I've always been locked into truth and knowledge. I've always chosen to go outside and play in nature with deers and rabbits. That's me. 
always been a black sheep, was going to go be a Himalayan monk, always just knew that we don't respect the spirit world, and I have a connection and affinity to it. That's my life. So when it comes to things like this, yeah, I've seen how it's been abused. I see how that seeds have been taken, and like what you said, you know, under that light, we all started using our own energy and that, that same drive for, this is what I said, a hidden ulterior motive thing so, okay i don't know what's going on a hidden motive uh something that we didn't initially sign up for you know so we're thinking we're doing one thing but we're actually accomplishing his agenda you know th you know what i'm saying that was the problem so his agenda i don't know if anybody shares that i've never met anyone who shares that that's why my whole thing is sovereignty in all dimensions i'm not going to tell anybody how they should live or what they should do show me teach me something new everybody teach me something new i can what i can do is i can tell you about breath work i can tell you about certain things of how life works in general that we all can use to help us level up like these psychological tactics like um i don't know why this is doing that. like healthy diets or, or, or certain things certain informational knowledge to help us live better that's all i'm on any anything other than anything that's taking away from me adding being an example to to people i'm not trying to do it i i know i don't care to get people to change i just want to be an example and everything i i teach i busy i'm busy living so i'm my number one best student you know what i'm saying i have i have too many healing modalities i don't even get to do them all in a day my thing is mm -hmm. i'm i've let most of those things go and I've accepted like who I am, what my purpose is. That's not hard anymore. Now it's just staying consistent. Like with this schedule, I need to be in bed already because I already know what I'm doing. I already know what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? But this was important. I feel like this, I felt like I didn't, I felt like it was timing and I trust Neek and I like Neek. And um, I well, appreciate you, you having me like here. <laughs> You know you got me in your back pocket. That's why you punch it. Oh, I missed the beginning. You know I'm going to have to see how you did it so long. I'm going to see what happened at the beginning. So <laughs> Girl, somebody said, ask about Loyal. Oh, we already talked about Loyal. I think. I think, yeah, we already talked about Loyal. Thank you, Tanel. You got a really good energy. And thank you for your uh, genuine and inquisitive thoughts. It sounds like you take interest in in, in the, the state of society or the mind. Are you a therapist, Tanel? To me, uh, no, I'm not. I am. I have an eight year old boy and I want to raise him in the best possible way. And the world is special. And we've all grown up with our own. Many of us are in cults and we don't even know it. And it's the cults of our family. And we think that we have to do things the way get mama did it. And this one did it. And that one did it. And people judge about how so, so much um, of the conversation you when you've had people. Um, come up, people say, oh, how could they do this? And it could never be me. And um, that kind of thinking um, is very limiting because it, it keeps you from knowing when it's gonna be you. Oh, he went out. You should have plugged that solar. You didn't plug it in when she told you. You didn't plug it in. He clicked on oh, you. Oh, he clicked on you, side of me. Okay, I wasn't talking about your people, solar. <laughs> oh, here you anyway. go. Uh, no, so I'm not I a therapist. I am in therapy. Long time. Oh, thinking, I heard you saying that we all kind of been calls and that type of thinking. And no, you didn't I, say you came back after you didn't just click this off. No, I didn't <laughs> click back. I just didn't click back on the thing as I put the camera on the tripod. So I could, you could... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I just I'm not a therapist. I just I find these conversations interesting. I've had experiences where I've looked. Um, at certain things and i was like oh i was almost in a cult you i'm a very intelligent well thank you very much um i don't normally come on camera i've been on a couple of times with Nick. she's been so gracious but because she said it had to be camera it's like okay let me let me let me break it down and find a spot and get the light and do the thing so yeah thank you you have a great presence make use of it in my opinion i, I will. thank you and i will do so i will continue to do so thank you all right. Thank and I thank you for staying up late. You just wanted that sandwich. That's why you didn't go to bed, but that's okay. Mm, <laughs> Neek, thank you. Me. Thank you, Neek. I'm going to get off. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You, Adil, you have rocked you. this. Solar, thank be, you be for up, taking the time. Give me up or something so I can stay in touch with you. 
Solar, I could be your mother. I cannot be one of your wives. I can't do she, it. I'm joking. Y'all doing the most. Y'all doing the most. She, <laughs> hey, you said it. You said it. I didn't say it. I'm, I'm joking. I just play. You already talked about the Jamaicans. I can't. I've, I've been around the block. I, I, so you don't want to be time, <laughs> no, I'm just, I gotta go. I can't blush on Meek's live. Goodbye. I'm gonna go. All right. All right. Well, that's his, that's his um Instagram on the thing. Yeah, I'm right there. I'm easy to find. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, Meek. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, JC been waiting. I don't know. Um, JC has been waiting. Everybody done clicked off. JC still there. No more or who JC? I don't. I don't know. All right, JC, real quick. JC, oh, Ruby, yeah, Ruby, yeah. It, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, bring me up. Stop What's playing. Up? What's, What's up, up bro? JC, I think it is. Yes, it is. Garrett. <laughs> Wait, that's funny. That's funny, right? Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold up. So what you want? You good? Oh my goodness, bro. This is JC. Get it. You already know. Stop, 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 stop. You already know. JC. Oh yeah, yeah. I already know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's on a late night. I know you try to get oh, out. Yeah. You see it. <laughs> so I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna hold you up, and I ain't oh, gonna oh, hold no, you JC up. Beyond the question, JC, JC. Oh, In she was gonna ask yeah. that question. No, you just don't. You don't know who you don't know. You don't know. What you don't know <laughs> uh, hold up. <laughs> Wait. I don't even just know if JC know what I know. Bro, Wait, you know, nah, man, know. yo, bro. I've been trying to get in contact with you. That's really? what's up. That's it. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I want to know. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really like low key on the low, and then, but I be on my stuff where I like, you like, I feel like, you know, it's times in a, a platform to be able where I feel comfortable, you know. I'm saying I, I to be like able to get your insight because when I tell you, woo, I don't do much online. I, I don't do much online. Go ahead. Yeah, me either. Yep. JC, that's that. I mean, JC, you wasn't gonna ask no questions. Oh, oh, I'm I sorry. I'm sorry. JC. We were just real quick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to bust it up with Solar real quick. Just I say, what's up, bro? JC. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I. <laughs> hey, go ahead. Make up a question. Make up a question. Make something up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, no, nah, no, nah, I did have, no, I had something to say. I had something to say. So, um, my thing was when I, when I got into it, I was already watching y'all, like watching him, da, 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 da. got into it, fall in, fall into it. And I, and I feel, I feel what you saying, like being about real shit, you understand what's going on. And the thing is, my question for you is all the people that he infiltrated because one one thing when i met him right one thing when i met him what he said to me was once you are affiliated with me it's no turning back you're always going to be tainted with my name he likes yeah he say that and how do you, I mean, okay. All right. It's like, it's like, to me, it's cute. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. Now I yeah. got Mr. Clean under the seat. I got some Windex. I can get you with Windex. Go. Let's, let's go. go. It was about this yeah, let's go. Anyway, my thing to you, you are JC, I done seen how he treated you. And I see what yeah. you are, and I see what you could have did. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm glad. By God's grace, whatever happened kept you wherever you was at. Yeah, I've seen all kind of pictures. I know what you look like. So at the end of the yeah. day, it's, this you, was you are, I know, you, and this you, is why I'm talking to Solar because he and would come honest, in I'm because you, sitting there coming up every day, excited, ready to grow. Nature like, boy or something. What am I missing here? What's going on? No, Solar know who I am. No, he on he he know who I am. And he know what happened. That. I have to break. Oh, okay. Yeah, he know what happened, and like, and, and and this is why the reason why I'm saying this is because it's so many people. It's mm -hmm. 
so many people that he influenced. And you're not wrong. You know what? Majority that, of the that, people that they would on, They don't even stuff. know. They don't even know. And they can say, "Oh, you are." They call me re a reject, a reject, and all these things. But they don't even understand. They don't even understand. No, I'm not you. Oh. you honestly, you, there's many of us, and it's unfortunate because and it's many of us. Say, That's Bible what I'm say, trying to. Let's go. Off a, a Thank you. Your neck and throw yourself in the ocean and trying to miss. Thank you. Children. Yes. Like you, is always going to tap into what's right and what's real. Whether yeah. you got the assistance of me, him, her, her it don't matter. Come Something on, like you, you're gonna find it anyway. It would just be anyway. nice if people would stop wasting your fucking time. It would be nice if people stop playing you this way and playing you that way, acting like they this when they really not. That's the issue here, and this is why they're afraid. People don't know. Is he really food. teaching knowledge? Is he really gonna help? That's the thing. A lot of the mm -hmm. people who followed him. They now follow me and they talk to me consistently because I'm actually feeding their souls with what I'm talking about. Not because I'm the only guy they can get it from because they I'm, I like to talk about it. There's, there's groups of people who feed my soul. Who talk about yeah, this. I don't want to exactly. talk about They big, I big, big, give back to you. you. Today? I didn't think I was be talking about alchemy today. I'm kicking it with y'all today. And it just be like that. So the chosen y'all we're gonna be who we are we're gonna do what we need to do unfortunately yeah there is a little bit of his, of his stain, a stain on there but ain't nothing like wash it twice like whatever because at the end of the day the truth is still needed people it's still not cool to be ignorant in the age of information it's still not cool it's still not mm -hmm. like we all want to be healthy and we all want to be psychologists and we all want to act like we high value and this and that and buying nice stuff and but but dumbed in a box of rocks in a, in a world that you live in like you don't even like come on man i'm just saying most of the things i have are gifts i just have really nice gifts i wouldn't go supporting these brands i wouldn't go by spending money and stuff like that like i'm i digress my thing is people's value systems are messed up alihio's value system was messed up what he was trying to get out of you rather than what he was trying to give to you mm -hmm. was the issue what you were there for was to receive. Yeah. He was looking for the upgrade. Please, the upgrade me. I'm ready. Like he, I'm, trying to my, I'm trying to upgrade to this and try to upgrade he, that to some degree. To some degree. Yeah, but Solar, what, what you don't the understand is... The was, mistakes weren't worth it, though. So I was, I was honest. I was honest before I met him, right? And that's why I, I got on to him. You feel me? Cause I was on it. I'm indigenous. Right. I've been I've been working the land since I've been five years old. You feel me? <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like that that that's me. So it was it was it was very natural for me to be attracted to someone in this. And it wasn't a sexual. It wasn't a sexual attraction, which was crazy. It was the knowledge. It was it was just. That's it wasn't the knowledge, it wasn't the knowledge that he was teaching me that I didn't know already and that's the crazy thing so that's where like people need to miss me with that like like the stuff he was talking about was stuff I already knew mm -hmm. and I was young and I'm and I'm still young like you feel what I'm saying so, like, it's like that like we resonate you feel what with what I'm saying? saying so we we wanted to link up. It's like here's a family. We like, wanted to link up, but like we needed, we needed the frequency, the vibe. Yeah, yeah. I felt that, yeah. And, and, you know, and that's what it was supposed to be. So notice that yeah. there's not wars and clashes between the members. Salihio, yeah, the, the, dude, yeah. Like the one dude who didn't need to be on the BS, but was only that's all that it was. And mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I digress. Yeah. I feel like I feel like I got an issue with anybody. Who claims something but doesn't do it? I got an issue with anybody who's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we got know, you. We didn't do no That's breath true. work, no meditation. We didn't do no spiritual connection. <laughs> no. Like, like, come yeah. on. We didn't even, we didn't even on level one. Yeah. All right, JC, we gonna we gonna drop you. All right, you All can right, drop me. You can drop me, bro. You can hey, drop tap me. In, tap in, just uh, send me something so I can know who. Yeah, yeah. Touching. Let's have to. All right, you. that's what's up. All right, thank, hey, you. thank you. Is there anything you want to close out with? No, nah, I think that was great. I think just want to say thank you for having me up here, Neek. Again, I have a lot of respect for you and your platform. And the reason why I choose to go to you is because I know you're going to be authentic with who you are and you're not going to twist the truth around. And you, I've never known you to do that. I've always known you to be real. And I think I've said this to you on the phone before. It's just like, 
I deal with all kinds of people, especially these people online. They're kind of like robots. You're like a person. There's like a soul here. So I just like to deal with you. So thank you for having me up here. Thank you for dealing with me. Thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to, you know, share my side of the story, my truth, my perspectives, put a word out there towards my family, my baby mother, stand up for my name for a little bit against all these attacks to certain degrees. And, you know, I just want to thank you for that opportunity. That's it. And, and nothing else. People gonna think what they want to think. I just had to get the opportunity to to share my side, and shine my light. So thank you. Yeah, and I want to thank you for coming up. I appreciate you spending three hours, almost four hours, <laughs> with us. I um, could keep going, but we appreciate it. Um, the only thing that I will uh, ask you in in exiting, uh, in the conversation that we had that I released on my YouTube outside of this, you asked me a question of if you should go visit. Um, nature boy did you oh yeah that was yeah want you to elaborate about that and then okay we so out on that note in my head it's like a movie and it's like 20 like let's say let's say 10 years let's not even go 20 years let's say 10 years later and i'm in this mind movie i'm thinking this 10 years later and i'm all wealthy or whatever i'm all established we have all kind of things built in the world we've had a high level of success in the family the kids are together whatever the leo's in jail still and for whatever reason it's a certain saturday and i'm at the jailhouse and there's a chessboard and it's me and him and we're sitting there in front of a chessboard and he's in jail and i'm not and i'm telling him things about what's going on out there in the world and things like that or whatever because i am different i i don't condemn even the man who did what he did to the people in my life, including my daughter. I don't, I'm not God in the sense to where I'm here to judge you in that sense. Only mm -hmm. God can judge you in that sense. So if he was to ever show or, or be a person who just r wishes that they didn't do that, showed some level of remorse, really was actually trying to grow and learn and like, yo, I really do want to use know the knowledge now. I'm done pretending about it and acting about it. And I like, actually really want to learn something now. I really want to become about, like how, like, you know, take responsibility for things. If he could ever be a character like that in my head, I can see me playing chess with him, telling him how his daughter is doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I could be there telling him what who, what's going on in the government and in the world. You know, I can do that. I can, I don't see no problem with that. Why would I not want to create peace? If if I was if I was God or Jesus, then and the devil or Satan showed up, I'm not gonna be like, I'm not gonna try. No, I'm gonna just be like, you good? Mm -hmm. You good? All right, cool. That's it. And and I feel like if he can be that, I don't I don't see him as a, anything lesser or work. See, I think seeing him as a devil or seeing him as like a demon or something like that is wrong because he's a human. Mm -hmm. just like the rest of us and i'm the type of person with a type of sympathy and empathy maybe not everyone has but i do have the level of sympathy and empathy to be like well he's still a human humans have done way worse not even that they've done worse but we've made some crazy mistakes and mm -hmm. you know he could be out of his mind he could be crazy and at that point i would just say let it go you're not going to see me over there trying to force it i'm not gonna do nothing like that i'm just saying let it be a day and age where there is an honest, genuine change, and somehow that's translated to where I can share. You can get. I can share access of the world. Let him know um, to a degree what he's missing, you know. And if everybody turns his their back on him, at least you know I'll be the one person on the planet to be genuine enough to at least offer a chance mm -hmm. for him to to redeem himself, to express himself, or something. I couldn't condemn him to hell if I wanted to. Only you know, he could do that. So I, w I don't want nobody to fall. And I don't want to see nobody in a hell state or in a low vibration. He's just he's with the rest of us at, at the end of the day as far as what we need to work on and what we need to elevate on. Some people just getting away with some some things. Some people mm -hmm. still just getting away with certain stuff, and be honest with you. Okay, so we're going to end on that note. Tell them how they can find you one more time. And oh, yeah. again, thank you for coming up. And we go in at right I'm here. different. I think different. I know some people are going to beat me up for that. Some people are going to beat me up. Some people are going to beat me up. Some people are going to beat me up. I don't care. It is what it is, what I think. And uh, you can find me at my IG name right there, my YouTube. 
is Sola More. You can also find my music on any platform by typing in that same thing. And if you go to any of my links, you will see emails, you'll see any social media platform that you may that you, you want to connect with me on. You can send me a message, send me a comment, just try, I'll probably receive it. So get in touch with me. Email, text, phone call, DM, whatever works for you, whatever the fastest way is for you. And then I like to schedule conversations with people just because it is a lot of people and there's a lot of quality that gets discussed. So um, I just organize things right now, but I have time for everybody. So thank you. Love you guys. All right. And on that note, peace. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Nuke.